Hello to all lovers of history and military artifacts. In this video, we've got for you incredible World War II finds. Let's cut right to the chase. PPS 43 a cache with a World War II submachine gun was found during the dismantling of an old house in Belarus. The owner of the building moved to Russia in 1970s. As for today, he is no longer alive. And so far, the police haven't been able to find out who hid a Sudaev PPS-43 in the attic. Experts considered it as unsuitable for shooting. There is a slot in the barrel painted in red. This prompted the detectives to the version that the submachine gun could be a training exhibit, but this can be easily solved by replacing the barrel. The 70-year-old weapon is perfectly preserved. The submachine gun was developed in the besieged Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, so the weapon was made as simple and economic as possible. Due to its lightness and reliability, it was a favorite weapon of scouts and partisans. A German tractor An interesting find was obtained from the Elbe River in Germany in 2018. Light half-track Kattenkrat HK-101 sunk during the battle in 1945. It was mass-produced in Germany in the years of the World War II. It was developed for use in the paratroops and mountain infantry divisions and ground forces of Nazi Germany. But due to its high dynamic characteristics, it became very popular in the German army and was widely used by all its units. A total of 8,871 motorcycles were produced by NSU and Stuva from 1940 to 1945. After the end of the war, about 550 more machines were assembled from the remaining parts and used in agriculture and forestry. To date, the equipment has been completely restored and is on display in the museum. German Machine Gunners One of the largest and longest battles was the battle for the city of Leningrad. To this day, search teams find many dead German and Soviet soldiers as well as weapons and ammunition. Recently, searches from St. Petersburg found two German machine gunners with a MG-42 machine gun. They were in that ranch where they were fighting their last battle. Most likely, the soldiers were killed during artillery shelling and were covered with earth. Personal badges were found with them, according to which their names will be established. The Arms Cache 24 rifles, pistols and submachine guns produced by various countries during the First and Second World War were sent to the National Museum of the Polish city of Przemysl. The weapon was discovered several years ago by the police in one of the city's apartments. The owner of which was engaged in illegal excavation at the battlefields. He restored all the weapons he found to a combat state. Among the illegally stored weapons, there were Soviet PPSH and PPS-43, as well as the German MP-40. After the investigation was completed, the illegal arsenal was transferred to the museum by a court decision and will become the crown jewel of the exhibition. A pistol An old man handed over a talker of pistol and ammunition, which he accidentally found in the belongings of his long-dead father, to the police. As the man explained, the weapons and ammunition were left by his father who used to be a partisan during the World War II. When the police officers asked if he was sorry to give away the last thing reminding him of his father, the man answered that he kept all the good memories in his heart and the gun can bring trouble if it falls into the wrong hands. The police promised him a monetary compensation according to the Russian law and to hand over the gun to the museum after checking. A message in a bottle The guys who were searching for the World War II artifacts found a message from the past. Digging up the German positions, they found a sealed bottle with various German papers from the war. No moisture got into the bottle and the papers were perfectly preserved. 
There was a lottery advertisement, a telegram from Sergeant Major Jägen Fischer from February 1942, and other documents. Now, it's not possible to say why the German soldiers left such a time capsule. The find was handed over to a museum. A gun in a jar The workers carried out some repair work in an old house, including ripping up the floors. A rusty jar was found in one of the rooms. Curious workers looked inside and found a gun. The Czechoslovak CZ-3645 pistol, which was produced until 1951 and used 6.35 cartridges, was stored in the jar. It was also called a pocket pistol for its small size. These weapons were produced to meet the needs of the country's army and police and were also exported. The weapon was in excellent condition as it lay in a dry place. The workers turned out to be the law-abiding people and called the police. A black digger Another fan of the World War II arms collecting was detained by Russian police. A resident of Kaluga city was engaged in the illegal sale of weapons and ammunition found at the World War II battlefields. During the search in the garage belonging to his relatives, the following were found. A Dikterov hand machine gun, a PPSH submachine gun, a Mosin rifle, 16 grenades, two mortar mines, cartridges of various calibers, bayonet knives, the order of the patriotic war and the medal for courage. The man restored all the found weapons and prepared them for sale. According to the Russian laws, he now faces a prison term. A 1941 safe Military experts of the Don Military Historical Museum opened a 1941 field safe found in the Rostov region. They opened it very slowly and carefully. The safe turned out to be booby-trapped. Before locking the safe up, the soldiers set up a tripwire with a F1 grenade and tied it to the door. When opened, the fuse is pulled out and an explosion is supposed to occur. But the searchers were lucky the grenade fuse didn't work. The remains of documents, an agent revolver, an F1 grenade and the state security forces insignia were found in the safe. Documents of great importance were burned in the autumn of 1941 so that they wouldn't fall into the hands of the Germans during the retreat, and only after that the safe was mined. The document fragments found were of particular interest. These were interrogation forms in Russian and Ukrainian. Some were filled out. There is every reason to assert that the field safe belonged to a special department of the 1135th Salsky Rifle Regiment. In October 1941, the regiment, armed mainly with small arms, found itself surrounded by the German tank divisions. Soldiers and commanders fought their way hand to hand. Notably, earlier the remains of an unnamed NKVD agent were found a few kilometers from the dugout with a safe. His legs were broken with explosion. He shot himself not to surrender to the enemy. It's quite possible that the officer found in the Matveva Kurgan district had something to do with the safe. The police came to 41-year-old Vitali, who lives in the city of Kaliningrad, formerly Königsberg. There was an information that the man keeps weapons and explosives at home. The police officers were lucky to enter the front door, as it turned out that Vitali had mined the back door to avoid possible intruders. He set the explosives and used a World War II German fuse as a detonator. The police had to call demoners for mine clearance. It was decided to destruct the ammunition by detonation, since there was a possibility of an explosion from an old munition. During the search, the whole arsenal of weapons and ammunition was seized. The man found them during excavation at the World War II battlefields. The Black Digger became very interested in collecting weapons and turned his house and garage into an armory. Rifles, pistols, machine guns, cartridges, grenades and even Faust patrons. 
There would be enough exhibits for an entire museum. In the shed, Vitaly equipped a workshop in which he restored the found weapons to working condition. Now he faces a prison sentence for illegal possession and alteration of weapons and ammunition. A cache of sabers During the World War II, the Red Army widely used cavalry detachments, who infiltrated behind enemy lines and struck unexpected blows to German rare units. Two treasure hunters accidentally managed to find a large cache of cavalry sabers of the 1927 model at the site of the World War II battles near the city of Smolensk. The searchers didn't report the exact location, hoping that there may still be other interesting finds. It's now impossible to establish the reasons that so many sabers were thrown in one place. Most likely one of the local residents collected them after the war and hid them. But then, maybe, he forgot the hidden place or just couldn't get back there to dig it up for some reason. The condition of cold weapons varied. The leather scabbards were all rotten, but some of the blades were in good condition and they can be restored. In any case, this is a very rare and interesting find, which brought the guys a lot of positive emotions. T-34 Recovery we managed to find unique footages of the T-34 recovery in June 1989 in the Rostov region from the Seversky Donetsk river. The divers had to wash away 4 meters of silt to get to the tank. After that, the turret was removed with a river crane and later the hull itself was pulled from the river. The tank was missing several rollers and the caterpillar was broken. Probably the T-34 crossed the river on the ice, but hit a mine and sank. After lifting, it turned out that the tank sank alone with the crew and was loaded with ammunition. 120 shells, 11 machine gun discs, 11 F-1 grenades and 1,600 rounds were removed from it. The crew of the tank was buried with military owners. Almost a year after lifting, the tank stayed in the repair base where it was restored. Finally, on the 9th of May 1990, the T-34 was installed on the labor square. But, as it turned out later, only the turret of the real tank got on the pedestal. The hull was from a tank of a later model. In 1990, the collapse of the USSR began and it wasn't possible to find out where the original tank hull had gone. Most likely, it was sold abroad. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible to find more detailed information about this tank recovery. This one was discovered at the site of the Battle of Stalingrad. The place of the T-34 tank explosion was found. As experts assume, the crew died in the battle, since the bone fragments were found alone with the remains of the combat vehicle. The searchers concluded that the tank was killed in August 1942. That's when the fierce fighting between the Red Army and the Nazis took place there. The tank ammunition exploded inside and the T-34 parts were scattered over tens of meters. The bottom plate of the tank was found at a depth of more than 2 meters. Historians have suggested that the tank was dug into the ground, with the turret showing above, and used as a stationary firing point. Traces of numerous hits from the various caliber shells were found on the hull. A rocket launcher Several years ago, searchers found a rocket launcher in excellent condition while excavating a German dugout. A leather bag of cartridges was found nearby. The guys just washed it with water and took some photos. Even the wooden onlays were in excellent condition, even though it has been in the clay for over 75 years. It will make a wonderful collectible for the homemade museum of military artifacts. 
World War II pistols. Two World War II guns were found in Poland. Builders stumbled upon the pistols by accident. The first one is possibly one of the best preserved copies of the legendary vis. It was wrapped in an oil-soaked rag and lay between the floor beams of an apartment building in the city center for several decades. Along with the pistol, there was also a magazine and ammunition. Interestingly, this is not the only such find in recent years. A German Mauser C96 pistol was also found recently. This weapon, as well, was found during renovations, but in one of the private houses. The owner of the Mauser hid it under the floor. However, it is not in as good a condition as its Polish analog. The Slupsk police already have the preliminary consent of the prosecutor's office to hand over both pistols to the Museum of the Polish Army. A secret stash of sabers in 2008, the searchers were lucky to find a cache of rare cold weapons, which dates back to the late 19th or early 20th century. It became clear that there was a repair shop during the World War II at the place of the find. The sabers turned out to be the German Solingen sabers, but with Lithuanian coats of arms on the hilts. The sabers were in excellent condition, with no notable corrosion, a small cleaning needed, and they are ready for collection. A German bomber It took three days to extract the remains of a German aircraft with a pilot from the ground. JU-87 fell in 1944 on the outskirts of the airport in Lenzany, near Krosna, in Poland. The remains of a Romanian pilot, who was at the helm, were also exhumed. An interesting fact is that a concrete bomb was found at the crash site. Most likely, it was a training flight with training bombing. Experts suggest that the bomb was the cause of the crash when it didn't fully exit the bomb bay and the plane failed to gain height. We still don't know why the pilot's remains were not recovered after the crash. A Russian search group discovered a T-28 tank near the village of Lambalova, Leningrad region, in 2009. A famous Karelian fortified region was located here during the World War II. This discovery is of particular interest since there are only a few original T-28 tanks left in the world. T-28 is a Soviet multi-turret medium tank of the interwar period. It was designed in 1930s by the engineers of the Design Bureau under the general supervision of Simeon Ginsberg. T-28 is the first medium tank in the USSR to be put into mass production. In the period from 1933 to 1940, the Leningrad Kirov factory produced 503 tanks of this type. T-28 has three turrets, a cannon and machine guns. At the time of its creation, it was the most powerful medium tank in the world. Since 1933, T-28 tanks have entered service with heavy tank brigades of the Red Army. However, according to the results of the battles on the Karelian Isthmus, the armor protection of tanks was considered insufficient, so some tanks were equipped with additional armor. By the middle of 1941, the T-28 was obsolete, but in terms of its tactical and technical characteristics, it still surpassed almost all tanks available to the Wehrmacht. T-28 tanks participated in the battles of the first period of 1941, but most of them were lost in the first months, mainly due to technical malfunctions. The found tank was turned into a stationary firing point and embedded in the ground on the defense line. It took a whole day to dig the tank out of the ground and send it for restoration. For five long years, restorers have been working on a complete repair of the T-28. Such a delay is due to the fact that only the tank hull turned out to be in the hands of the experts, luckily perfectly preserved. Most of the time was spent searching for the original elements of chassis, engine, turret, equipment and weapons. 
The researchers undertook several expeditions to the battlefields with a T-28 tanks fort. As a result of many years of searching, the combat vehicle is now completely restored. It's the only working T-28 in the world. Two more tanks are in Finland. They were abandoned by the Red Army during the Winter War of 1939. And one tank is in the tank museum in Moscow. Many interesting military artifacts that have remained on the islands since the Soviet-Japanese War of 1945 have been found over the past few years. A few Japanese tanks were taken from Shumshu Island and are now in Patriot Park in Moscow, together with the aircraft parts from the same island. And most importantly, a big search mission was carried out during which dozens of dead soldiers and commanders of the Soviet and Japanese army were found. Other islands also continue to amaze. Japanese fortification and underground bunkers with weapons and ammunition left in 1945 are being found all over Matua Island. In the summer of this year, an incredible find was discovered on Paramushir Island. A Japanese 105mm Type 92 cannon was found in a cave in a combat position, where it had been standing since August 1945. This gun is a Japanese howitzer from the World War II. It entered service in Japan in 1932 and received its baptism of fire in 1939 during the border conflict on Halkengol. Subsequently, these guns took part in the battles for Guadalcanal, the Philippines, and a number of other battles in the Pacific. In Paramushir, such howitzers were in service with the 2nd Battery of the 2nd Artillery Detachment of the 91st Infantry Division of the Northern Tsushima Garrison. The searchers said that many people knew about this gun, since after the fighting it remained in its place, until the ground collapsed and buried it for several decades. Now it's planned to restore the gun and then transfer it to the Memorial Victory Park. The Cache of Pistols A man discovered a cache of weapons from the first half of the 20th century in the Saratov region. With a metal detector, he found rare pistols from the First and Second World Wars in grease and solid oil. We're talking about the Walther P-38 and Steyr M-1912 weapons. The first of them was produced in 1943, the second one in 1915. The man was fond of searching for military artifacts with a metal detector and, in the evening after work, he went on a search. Closer to 8 p.m. he heard a clear signal. After digging up the ground, he saw a heavy metal cylinder. It turned out to be someone's stash. There were two dismantled pistols and cartridges inside the cylinder. Everything was well-oiled and wrapped in newspapers. The searcher took everything found to the police to avoid troubles with the law. After the examination, it turned out that the pistols were combat-ready and in excellent condition. A man ought to get a reward of 8,000 rubles. This is about 110 US dollars. A German safe Many searchers go outside every day in the hope of finding rare military artifacts that time hasn't yet been able to destroy. There are still lots of finds, but interesting and rare things do not come across so often. Each find of this kind brings a lot of joy and renewed vigor for future searches. Recently, the search group was lucky to find a real Wehrmacht staff safe. It was probably the staff cashier's safe. The box was filled with bank packages with coins. The top of the coins was badly damaged by moisture, but those that were lying packed below were in good condition. We do not know why the military needed to carry so much cash with them, but the find is very interesting, although not that valuable. Anyway, the guys had got a lot of positive emotions. A letter in a tank Quite by a chance, during the restoration of the T-35 tank, a letter that a tank school cadet wrote home to his mother was found. 
He didn't have time to finish it and he put it between the sheathing and the armor. The T-35 is a heavy Soviet tank with five turrets, which had great firepower but had very weak armor and low speed. All the tanks of this series were immediately sent into battle and almost all of them died at the very beginning of the war. Only a few vehicles survived 1941, but they never participated in battles again, but were used for filming a documentary about a battle of Moscow. Only two tanks have survived to this day. In the letter found, the cadet asked his mother if she had received the money he had sent to her previously. The address was also indicated on the reverse side. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible to identify relatives at this address and find out the fate of the cadet. KV-2 tank In Ukraine, during construction work, fragments of a Soviet KV-2 heavy tank were found. When the builders began to dig a pit near the house, they saw the barrel of a large caliber gun sticking out of the ground. After clearing, the find turned out to be a part of the turret with a 152mm cannon from a Soviet KV-2 heavy tank from the World War II. When the find was removed from the ground, a high-explosive shell was found inside, which miraculously didn't explode. All tanks of this type were destroyed in the summer of 1941. Only one copy has survived to this day. We can only guess how the part of the tank got under the foundation of the house. Two soldiers This story is about the battlefield where the Red Army encountered the Hungarian royal troops. Another search for dead soldiers on the territory of the Voronezh region was held in August this year. Literally on the first day, a dead soldier was found. According to the personal belongings, it was possible to determine that the soldier belonged to the Red Army. They were cartridges for Mosin's rifle, two RGD-33 grenades, a shovel, a spoon, a belt, and a pencil among the found items. In the same trench, the searchers found a Hungarian shovel, cartridges, and grenades. Probably a Soviet soldier captured an enemy trench but was killed in it. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible to establish the name of the deceased. The searchers couldn't find neither a dog tag nor documents. Soldiers used to sign their spoons, but after cleaning the spoon from the soil, no inscription were found. The Red Army soldier will be buried with military honors. A German officer. Diggers from St. Petersburg found a Wehrmacht soldier during a regular expedition. Most likely it was an officer since he had a dispatch case with maps with him. Only a few bones were found from the officer himself, apparently he was scattered by the explosion. But many personal belongings were found – a watch, a purse with coins, glasses, an anti-aircraft gun sight, a merit badge, a spoon, a comb, and a smoking pipe. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible to find a dog tag that can be used to identify the soldier. The searchers assumed that this was a Wehrmacht Jäger since they fought in this place during the war. A Wehrmacht uniform the uniform jacket of the Wehrmacht, discovered in 2019 in the city of Lubin in Poland, was included in the collection of a local museum. It was handed over by a man who found it under the floor in an old house. The uniform, wrapped in oilcloth, lay under the boards for 75 years. The jacket belonged to an unknown Wehrmacht corporal. According to the staff of the local history museum in Lubin, although the uniform was more fitting, its condition is considered satisfactory. It's already known that after the repair, the uniform will be presented at an exhibition dedicated to the Battle of Lubin. This is the first known uniform of the Wehrmacht which can be directly related to the history of Lubin during the World War II. The museum staff commented, thanking the guy for the gift of the jacket. German soldiers. 
Two skeletons of Wehrmacht soldiers were discovered at the construction site of a residential quarter in Poland. Archaeologists have determined that this was a hastily made burial. Among the remains, many items of equipment were preserved – buttons, a helmet, parts of uniforms, fragments of individual military equipment, household items including bottles, and a dog tag. The first fighting was taking place here in July 1944, when Lublin was liberated from the Nazis by Soviet troops. A lot of small arms ammunition was found at the excavations, which indicates that intense fire was conducted on the advancing Soviet troops from this place. Bell P-39 Air Cobra Aircraft With the coming of the worm season, search teams have stepped up their work across the country. Decades after the World War II, they managed to open a new page of history. In Russia, in the Kursk region, an American Air Cobra fighter with a pilot was found and has already been raised from the ground. Soviet pilots flew such a land lease aircraft during the war years. Now the searchers are exploring the tailing. When the plane crashed, it broke into pieces, which is why it's possible to find a lot of fragments in the soil. The Air Cobra fighter P-39 was at a depth of 8 meters. It has already been established that the plane was shut down near the village of Poneri on June 2, 1943. That time, fierce battles took place in the Kursk region, during which enemy troops tried to disrupt the supply of arms on the eve of the Kursk battle. Judging by the way the fighter fell, it was shut down in a dogfight. It dived, in fact, vertically. As a rule, this means that the pilot was unconscious or already dead. Surprisingly, after a terrible impact on the ground, which drove the remains of the fighter into the clay soil and left almost nothing of the pilot's personal belongings, it was still possible to establish the identity of the deceased. Only a small fragment of the postcard, which was preserved in the pilot's torn map case, allowed us to establish his last name in the examination. His name was Vitaly Vasilievich Silkovsky. Unfortunately, he has no relatives in the questionnaire. Apparently, he was an orphan. He had already fought for more than a year at the time of his death, had eight downed aircraft to his credit, one in a group. He was awarded two orders of the Red Banner. This is a hero, and we managed to bring him back to our present life, said the search group leader Alexei Sotnikov. In addition, the heaviest part of the aircraft, the engine, survived. It was taken out by an excavator because it weighs almost a ton and with great difficulty cleared of clay. It will not be specially restored. The engine, with all the damage, will be a part of the museum's exposition dedicated to the battle on the northern part of the Kursk bulge. The village of Poneri in the war years was one of the areas of attack of the Nazi army in the framework of Operation Citadel. Tens of thousands of people died there in the hard-fought battles. And now the residents of a small village cherish these memories. A symbolic chapel in the memory of those who died stands in the square near the railway station. And in the station itself a whole hall is dedicated to the memory of the battle. Defender of Leningrad Nevsky Pitachok is the name that stands for a bridgehead on the left bank of the Neva River, held by Soviet troops during the Battle of Leningrad from September 19, 1941 to April 29, 1942, and from September 26, 1942 to February 17, 1943. From this bridgehead, Soviet troops repeatedly tried to launch an offensive on Mga and Sinyavina to meet the troops striking from the east and thereby break the blockade of Leningrad. On February 25, 2020, on the Nevsky Pitachok at a depth of almost two meters, searchers found the remains of a Soviet soldier. It turned out to be Mikhail Tokarev, who was born in 1923 in Tajikistan. He was killed in action on July 23, 1943.
a medal for the defense of Leningrad, a disc of a Spagen submachine gun, two grenades, a bowler, a medkit, a waist belt, an iron cigarette case and a pencil were found with the deceased. It seems incredible, but the front pocket of his shirt was preserved. There was a leather wallet inside with a military registration card, a political map of the world, a Red Cross Society certificate, a part of a copper icon and a piece of paper with a prayer. The identity of the defender of Leningrad was established by the documents found. A cache of weapons more recently, one of the users of the search forum shared his very interesting find. This find was made in an uncommon place, in the deep woods. In this forest, searchers often find coins and objects of the past, but a cache of weapons was found there for the very first time. The searcher who made this find is unwilling to share the details, but he showed a few photos and said that a cache was found in Ukraine. The fact that the digger doesn't share detailed information is understandable, because in addition to the high value of the finds, he may have legal problems, since both in Russia and Ukraine such finds must be turned over to the state. Thanks to the zinc box and proper packaging, the find has been preserved to this day very well. There were two revolvers inside. The year 1920 is seen on one of them. They were wrapped in paper and oiled, most likely they are fully functional. In addition, there were also 7.62 and LR-22 cartridges in the box. It's now unknown why this box was buried. There was also a newspaper printed in 1940, so we can assume that the cash was made by partisans during the World War II. Nazi treasure trove in 2015, a Nazi-era treasure was dug up. An unusual treasure has been discovered in the north of Germany, part of the gold and foreign exchange reserve of the Central Bank of Nazi Germany. Initially, an amateur archaeologist dug up 10 gold coins in a hollow between the roots of a large tree. Then he reported the discovery to the police. As a result, another 207 coins were found. Two aluminum badges were also found among the coins. They are engraved with swastikas, eagles, and the inscription Reichsbank Berlin 244, the name of the central bank in Nazi Germany. There are French, Belgian, Italian, and Austro-Hungarian coins released from 1931 to 1910. Also, another three objects of archaeological value were discovered. It is assumed that the value of the find is about 45,000 euros. P2 Bomber In 1942, fierce battles between the Nazis and the Red Army took place near the city of Rzhev. A huge number of dead soldiers and broken equipment were left forgotten in forests and swamps. In the Rzhevsky region, the searchers managed to find the wreckage of the P2 aircraft. This one was operating along the front edge of the German defenses and was shot down by the enemy fighters. The pilots fought until the last bullet. This was established when a large caliber machine gun was found. There was not a single cartridge in it. Some details of the plane were melted. It was probably still burning in the air. The searchers were able to find serial numbers on the aircraft parts. This will help to recognize the names of the entire crew, the pilot, navigator and radio operator. IL-2 Ground Attack Aircraft in Belarus, on the banks of the Dnieper River, searchers have found the crash site of a Soviet combat aircraft. The wreckage of the IL-2 attack aircraft, which was shut down presumably in 1943, was removed from the ground with the specialized military technical equipment. The crash site of the plane was found according to the memoirs of Pavel Savitsky, who was a teenager during the war. Over 100 fragments were raised. The most valuable find was a fragment of the engine block with the factory serial number 419 1666. 
These aircraft attacked enemy ground targets. No bombs were found at the crash site, but several rockets were found, which the pilot didn't have time to release before he was shot down. Parts of the aircraft were found at a depth of 6 meters. This means that the attack aircraft crashed into the ground almost vertically. According to preliminary data, this L-2 was lost on December 14, 1943. Two planes didn't return to the airfield that day. The searchers expect to restore the history of the downed plane after the response from the Central Archive of the Ministry of Defense of Russia and the search for relatives of the pilots. P-2 Bomber this year, in May, another World War II aircraft was found by the Kurgan search party. Local residents pointed out the crash site. It was shut down on August 25, 1942. It was a serious battle with heavy losses on both sides. Nine P-2 bombers and six Yak-1 fighters flew towards Kastorne station, captured by the Germans. Eight Soviet bombers and two fighters didn't return from the air battle. The story of the plane's death was told by a local resident. He learned it from his mother. The women were working in a field and saw a pilot jump out of a falling plane. The women told the pilot that the Nazis were shooting Jews and communists, and the pilot confessed he was a communist. After a while, when the German soldiers took him prisoner, one of the women began to ask for a parachute material to distract a German soldier, and the second woman managed to take the pilot's documents and hide them. After the war, the surviving pilot sent a letter to this woman, where he thanked her for saving his life. Two other pilots were killed while still in the air. Their remains were found at the crash site. According to the engine number, it was possible to identify all the crew members. HE-111 is a German medium bomber, one of the Luftwaffe main bombers during the World War II. This plane was found far behind the front line, where there was no fighting. Most likely it was conducting a reconnaissance mission on the rear of the Soviet troops and was shut down. The entire crew was killed. The aircraft belonged to the first group of the 53rd Squadron of the Condor Legion. This crew bombed England and then was transferred to the Eastern Front. One of the pilots was awarded the German Cross in gold. Pilots' remains with partially preserved clothes were found, as well as many other things. The USSR and Europe maps, German blankets, large containers with canned food, snowshoes, Soviet and occupation money. Four jackets were also found with icons printed on cardboard and orthodox crosses inside the pockets. There were also a lot of women's scarves, needles and pins. Probably the pilots collected all these for their wives and girlfriends. Despite the fact that the plane was on fire and lay many years in the ground, some finds turned out to be very well preserved. After a full examination of the crash site, the remains of the pilots were reburied at the military cemetery. Junkers Ju-88 is a multi-purpose Luftwaffe aircraft of the World War II. One of the most versatile aircraft of the war, used as a bomber, a high-speed bomber, a scout, a torpedo bomber, a night fighter, and as a part of a flying bomb in the Mistel project. Two Russian searchers from the city of Krasnodar went to the mountains in search of World War II artifacts. Pieces of airplane duralumin were found on one of the meadows. Having determined the place of the largest accumulation of iron, they decided to start excavations. At the excavation site, the metal lay in a solid layer. After a while, the engine of the aircraft and large fragments of duralumin were found, along with the remains of the crew. A week later, the guys arrived in a big team, as there was a lot of work ahead. Several data plates were found, and it was possible to establish the number of the aircraft. It was a Ju-88, 84 number 6611. After searching the archives, it was found that all four pilots who died in the plane were awarded Iron Crosses of the First Class, which were later found at the crash site. 
The plane was shut down in May 1943. All the fragments of the bomber found were burned. Probably the plane was still burning in the air. On the last day of the excavations, they found parts of weapons, a rocket launcher, and cartridges in packages. A few personal pilots' belongings were also found, a words, a cigarette case, and a knife cutter. An interesting fact was that many Soviet-made cartridges were found at the crash site. The searches suggested that a Soviet-made machine gun could be installed on the German aircraft. They managed to find out the history of this aircraft. The Ju 8884 No. 6611 was shut down by Senior Lieutenant Azarov from the 57th Aviation Regiment. The victory was confirmed by Soviet ground troops. The plane was shut down in the Upper Adagum area and fell in the Krymska area. Four days later, Sergei Azarov died and was awarded the highest award of the USSR, the title of Hero of the Soviet Union. On May 8, 1943, in the Abinska area, Azarov and Soldatov's plane attacked 6 Messerschmitt Bf-109. Soldatov's plane was shut down and he jumped out with a parachute, but the Germans continued to shoot at the pilot descending. So Azarov tried to cover his commander with the side of his plane. As a result, Azarov's plane caught fire and he also jumped out with a parachute, but continued to burn. Two days later, on May 10, he died of burns in the hospital and was posthumously awarded the title of Hero of the Soviet Union. Soldatov survived, but having been seriously injured, he flew only liaison aircraft since that day. Here is a photo of Sergei Azarov. At that time, he was a young man of 27 years old. A German tractor On September 25, 2021, in Russia, in the Novgorod region, a search party managed to pull a Wehrmacht tractor out from the Volkhov River. As it turned out, the tractor ended up at the bottom of the river during the World War II. It fell through the ice in the harsh winter of 1941. At that time, in December 1941, Soviet troops launched a counteroffensive and pushed the German troops across the Volkhov River. The searchers had previously been working on the other side, trying to find a Soviet T-34 tank, which, according to local residents, also turned out to be at the bottom of the Volkhov. The search was unsuccessful, but on the opposite bank of the river, on Spak, the group stumbled upon a German artifact. It was also possible to establish the affiliation of the tractor to a specific enemy unit. The discovery of a soldier's belt in the car made it possible. According to the brand on the buckle, the tractor belonged to the 2nd Company of the 1st Battalion, the 10th Tank Regiment of the 8th Wehrmacht Panzer Division. Also, about 40 Czech hedgehogs were found at the bottom near the tractor, as well as most mechanical components, including the radiator. According to experts, the vehicle is in good condition, despite the fact that it has been lying at the bottom for 80 years. A German truck A lot of military equipment lies at the bottoms of water bodies and swamps. But sometimes there are also ordinary civilian cars that were used by the military to transport weapons and ammunition. Today they are of great value, as there are only a few of them left. One such find was recovered from the river in very good condition, despite the fact that the car had been in the water for 75 years. Local residents show the searchers the place where the truck was located. It turned out that many of the elderly residents knew about this car in the river since, after the war in the dry summer, parts of the truck were sticking out of the water. Local residents managed to remove the bonnet from the truck and pull out the seats. Everything else was in full completeness, even the original license plate remained. The truck is currently in the process of reconstruction. Soviet IL-2 attack aircraft 
We've already told you about the Soviet aisle to attack aircraft discoveries, and here is another story about this flying tank. It got this name for its fully armored body and high firepower. The L-2 was armed with bombs, cannons, and rockets. In December 1941, two single-seat L-2 aircraft took off from the military airfield in Borki. The task was exploration and attack. An experienced 20-year-old junior lieutenant Menshenin didn't return to the base. His leader, an experienced pilot Markovtsev, searched in vain to locate him. After some time, it became clear that the missing aircraft fell near the village of Bolshaya Volga. The plane burned down and the pilot died. The deceased pilot was buried nearby in the woods and then reburied. Unfortunately, the exact location of his grave is unknown. After the war, local residents stole parts of the aircraft for their needs, but the searchers managed to find the most valuable. The armored capsule remained untouched. It was in excellent condition. To date, the body of the aircraft has been restored and installed as a monument next to the factory where the IL-2 was assembled during the war. The German Subchasers during the search for the Soviet submarine M-96, which went missing in 1944 in the Gulf of Finland, the participants of the bow to the ships of the Great Victory Expedition and the Marine Engineering Company LLC for towing found the places of death of four German ships from the 12th Flotilla of Submarine Chasers. In 1942, this unit, among others, ensured the protection of the Gagland anti-submarine frontier, the Sea Urchin Mine Barrier, the Eager in German, which was one of the largest links to the naval blockade of Leningrad, and throughout the war this was the first obstacle that Soviet submariners faced when going on combat campaigns. The German ships that died at different times and for different reasons lie approximately in the same area between the islands of Gogland and Mali Tutors. UJ-1211, former whaler Rao X, sunk on August 7, 1941, and UJ-1204, former fisherman Berman, sunk on October 26, 1941, lie at a depth of about 70 meters at a short distance from each other, clearly in the coordinates of the Soviet minefield 19A, exposed on July 15, 1941, by the Ural mine layer and the Kalinin destroyer. The German command didn't organize a controlled trolling of its rare areas, for which it cruelly paid with the loss of these two units. The ships have identical damage, both sections tore off. The death of these two chasers was accompanied by heavy casualties among the crews. 22 people died on UJ-1211 and 45 sailors on UJ-1204. The discovery and the results of the both ships' examination refuted the version of the ship's death that was dominant in all past years, the explosion on the Rowan drifting mines. UJ-1216, former whaler Star 91, was sunk on August 26, 1942, by a Soviet torpedo boat of the D-3 type under the command of senior lieutenant Maxim Pinov who received the Order of the Patriotic War of the Second Degree for this battle. During a rapid night attack, the Soviet boat hit the German ship with a torpedo in the central port at close range. UJ-1216 broke and sank in less than a minute. The German crew lost 39 sailors, more than a half. Now the hull of the former whaler lies at a depth of 55 meters. It's broken into two parts and lies in the form of letter V, but the bridge and bow armament of 88 and 20 mm guns and even the ship's bell have been preserved. UJ-1205 died on December 1, 1942, being rammed by the German mine sweeper M29 in the fog. Having received a blow to the engine room, having struggled for survival for over half an hour, UJ-1205 went down. The ship is now lying at a depth of about 60 meters, with its nose up and damaged stern submerged in the ground. In this accident, two members of the chaser's crew were killed. The search for other sunken ships continues. A safe
Another army safe was found by a search group at the former positions of the Red Army. Most likely, having been surrounded in 1941, Soviet officers decided to bury a box with important documents so that the Germans wouldn't get it. Many documents are well preserved. Now, according to the records, it will be possible to find out what events took place at that time in the regiment surrounded by the enemy. After the study and restoration, the documents will take their place in the museum. A German machine gunner A search group from the south of Russia found a German machine gunner who stayed in his trench since the World War II. There were a lot of German cartridges for the MG-42 machine gun in the trench. Among the personal belongings, a well-preserved cap was found with a sign of the Mountain Rifle Division of the Wehrmacht, Edelweiss. However, it was damaged with shrapnel as well as the gunner's head. The cap will make a wonderful museum exhibit. Now the searchers are trying to establish the gunner's identity by the number of his soldier's badge. A Black Digger Russian police officers detained a man living in the city of Belgorod, who was engaged in the excavation of the weapons at the World War II battlefields. He restored all the weapons found to combat condition and illegally stored them at home. In total, 10 Soviet and German small arms were seized. BPSH, MP40 submachine guns, Mosin and 98 Kate carbines, Diktaryov machine gun, SVT-40 sniper rifle and others. For illegal storage and weapon alteration, the man faces a prison sentence. A message made. On June 6, 1943, Mi-109G4 from JG-52 was shot down in an air battle east of Kabardinka. The pilot Pataman managed to barely land the damaged car and hid in the forest. Four days later, on June 10, 1943, he reached the location of the German troops. This year, a search group decided to examine the landing spot of the German ace. Unfortunately, most of the aircraft was dismantled by the Soviet military and local residents after the war, but the guys were lucky to find the place and a few miraculously preserved fragments of the Pataman's plane. A propaganda leaflet mine a search group found an interesting ammunition in a forest where fierce battles between Soviet and German troops took place during the World War II. Usually, searchers bury such finds back or drown them in the nearest pond, but this time the guys decided not to do it. They knew that it was a German ammunition with propaganda leaflets inside. After opening the mine, it was possible to extract perfectly preserved leaflets. Each of them urges the Soviet soldiers to surrender and side with the enemy. Each such leaflet was a pass to join the Nazi troops. These documents, being in great condition, will be an excellent addition to someone's private collection. An artillery tractor The searchers managed to recover an artillery tractor Stalinitz from the 9-meter depth from a lake. S-65 was designed to work with trailed agricultural machines, as well as to drive stationary machines. However, with the beginning of the World War II, due to the losses of the first period, most tractors were withdrawn from agriculture. They were used to tow high-power guns. I must say that during the war a large number of tractors went to the Germans as trophies, who also used them to tow medium and large caliber guns. Impassable marshes go on and on for miles around the lake where the tractor droned. The Stalinitz was lying at a depth of 9 meters. The divers had to work in conditions of poorest visibility to get the remains of the driver first and then to wrap the cables around the vehicle itself. In the first day of the operation, divers managed to leave the remains of the driver for a burial by the way, the place where the Stalinists drowned was indicated many years ago by a local woman. The driver was her fiancé, and he drowned right in front of her. In 1942, a temporary military airfield was located on the ice of Usodice Lake. 
A tractor driver was clearing the runway from snow, and either he miscalculated or the ice wasn't firm enough, but suddenly the tractor fell through the ice. One of the doors was blocked by a canister and couldn't be opened, that's why the guy couldn't get out. For almost a whole month the artillery tractor was being lifted. The locals provided a crawler tractor, which helped a lot. The Stalinets, raised from the marshes, was sent to Veliki Luki for reconstruction. By the way, the tractor is in very good condition. There is no rust, the mechanics are working properly, even the levers are all working. The instruments are intact and there was fuel and oil in the tanks. According to Sergei Titkov, the tractor is unique. There are generally six or seven of them in museums of the world, but they are all without a cabin. And here is a tractor from Tver with a factory cab. And although it collapsed during the ascent, the restorers were able to recover it. A German officer while searching for artifacts at the site of the World War II battles, the diggers discovered a German officer, who died in a battle and was buried by his comrades-in-arms. The officer was covered with a black leather cloak, which was well preserved. For many years of being in the ground, the cloak took the shape of a human skull, creating a mask of death of that brutal war. Unfortunately, the searchers didn't provide more information on the find. An ammunition depot. We all know that fierce battles took place in Poland during the World War II. A huge amount of weapons and ammunition is found nowadays in the most unlikely places. In 2017, in Parshkov, a whole warehouse of various German made cartridges was discovered during an old house renovation. Some were in pouches and in excellent condition. As experts said, these cartridges are still suitable for shooting. There were also bullets for German STG-44 assault rifle, which is a rare find. Sturmgewehr 44 is a German machine gun developed during the World War II. Around 450,000 of these were issued. Its specialty is having a greater range of aimed firing due to the use of the so-called intermediate cartridge which is more powerful and has better ballistics than pistol cartridges used in submachine guns. World War II arms cache During a local police department building demolition in Ukraine, workers discovered a cache of World War II weapons and ammunition, two Hungarian M36 fragmentation grenades, four German M24 grenades, two Soviet RGD-33 grenades, an Austrian Steyr pistol 1912 version, Mosin rifles, SVT-40 and cartridges of various calibers. Historians believe that there's a possibility that weapons could belong to the Ukrainian insurgent army, which fought on the side of the Nazis against the Red Army. In addition, experts observed that there were huge catacombs under the building that haven't been explored previously. It's quite possible that the bandits' headquarters could be located there. A black digger. Polish police detained a man, engaged in excavation at the sites of the World War II. In his basement, he equipped an entire underground workshop for the found weapons restoration. The police seized a dozen pistols and rifles completely ready for use. They also found hundreds of cartridges of various manufacturers and calibers, many spare parts for weapons and grenades. The police said that the grenades are the most dangerous, as they have been lying in the ground for many years and could explode at the slightest touch. The man said that he wasn't going to sell or use anything, being just a collector. Now he faces a prison term. MiG-3 Airplane In the fall of 2020, the searchers found the crash site of the MiG-3 fighter of the World War II. The MiG-3 is a high-speed interceptor fighter but could be used as an attack aircraft or light dive bomber. 
the plane crashed into the ground at a right angle and plunged into the swampy soil for several meters. Therefore, the searchers had great difficulty extracting the aircraft parts and the pilot's personal belongings from the swampy soil. The blow was so strong that the armor plate broke into several parts. The condition of the found documents and the pilot's clothing was surprisingly good. Studying archival documents, it was possible to find out that the plane made a flight after repairs and most likely crashed for technical reasons. A lot of technical documentation and several sets of clothing for pilots and technicians were found in the cockpit. The best preserved leather helmet and handkerchiefs were embroidered with initials. The remains of the pilot were not found and the seat belts were unfastened. Most likely the pilot managed to jump out with a parachute. Nowadays, the search for the pilot and his future fate continues. Three Soldiers The Battle of Stalingrad ended with the first major defeat of the German forces on the Eastern Front. More than 300,000 German soldiers and their allies were captured, including Field Marshal Paulus. At the site of these battles, search groups continued to search for unexploded ordnance and dead soldiers. One day, members of the search group Nadezhda found the remains of three dead Red Army soldiers. It was clear that they died in their trench while repelling an enemy attack. The remains of all soldiers will be reburied with military honors at the military cemetery. An absolutely incredible discovery was made in August this year in Germany. Brass knuckles, old letters and a portrait of Adolf Hitler are among the trove of World War II Nazi artifacts found hiding behind a wall of a home in Hagen, Germany. The Nazi time capsule was discovered during renovation following a severe flood that hit the region in July, which killed 190 people and cost billions of dollars in damages. Sebastian Yurtsevan was conducted renovation at his aunt's home that suffered damages, when he pulled a rotted piece of plasterboard away and came across a newspaper dated 1945. I got goosebumps, Sebastian told local media. I didn't think it would turn into such a huge discovery. One by one, Yurt 7 pulled out a revolver, gas masks, National Socialist German Workers' Party eagles, and hundreds of letters and documents from the National Socialists' People Welfare, among other items. NSV, which was started in 1938, was structured on the Nazi Party model and provided childcare, healthcare and medical services to those who followed Hitler's values and ideologies. The group also operated its own kindergartens and several relief organizations and organized its Kinderland Dispatch in 1940, a camp for Nazi youth. Researchers say there is evidence of all these aspects in the Hagen find. NSV was funded through assets and money taken from Jews, and researchers believe the home was once one of its headquarters. The artifacts are said to have been quickly tossed inside the foot-wide wall cavity in April 1945, when Nazi members heard American forces were marching into Hagen. Archive manager Ralph Blank told, that must have happened very hectically. Such hasty disposal operation are known from countless diary campaigns, but to actually be able to secure such a find once, that alone is a very exciting thing. The discovery is being hailed as a time capsule from the Nazi era, and experts hope it will reveal the inner working of the NSV, as most of the documents were destroyed or lost following the arrival of Allied forces. We hope, for example, to come across files on the distribution of so-called Jewish furniture, said Blank. Along with the documents, experts found dozens of World War II gas masks for men, women and children stashed inside the wall, along with several air canisters. Staff excavating the home have collected 12 boxes of artifacts that have been taken to another facility for further examination. 
Yurtsevan and his aunt were amazed at the discovery and said they had no idea of the Nazi legacy behind the wall of their family house that was purchased in the 1960s. Another World War II find was recovered from the river. The BA-10 armored car, the crew of which defended Novgorod in August 1941, was recovered on the 4th of August in Russia. A crane was installed on the bridge over the Mali Volkhovitz river, which significantly affected the traffic intensity. But the drivers were very supportive, since it was the exact place where the Red Army soldiers made their last stand, protecting the bridge on their B-810. The recovery team conducted a search that showed the presence of an object at the bottom of the river. Then the divers went under the water and found the car. The armored car was heavily covered with silt and waste of all kinds, but it was located in the same spot where it fell into the river on August 18, 1941, lying on its roof. This was the last Iron Soldier who defended Novgorod before it was occupied by Hitler's troops. The first attempt to move the car, already freed from the bottom layers, ended with a cabin separating, but the ascent was continued. It's no big deal, Alexander Morzunov, the commander of the Nahotka search party, assured. Disassembly during the restoration process is inevitable, and I do not doubt that the car will be restored and maybe will participate in military parades. It's noteworthy that at various times the search for the car has already been conducted. The previous attempt was made on 2013. Experts scanned the bottom of Mali Volkhovitz in the area of the possible car location, finding only wood and car tires. They decided that the car was already salvaged in the Soviet years to clear the shipping lane. And yet there was an armored car in these murky waters. The history of the BA-10 with a 45mm cannon, which was a fairly massive machine in the Red Army, is also known. According to the archival data, it belonged to the 28th Tank Division commanded by Colonel Ivan Chernyhovsky. It fought in defense of the city in the first months of the war. The battle with the armored car participation is described in the Journal of the Military Operations of the Division. On August 15, 1941, Regiment Commander Levin ordered a scout platoon leader Alexander Karlov to go to the Novgorod Defense Headquarters in the Antoniev Monastery. Having crossed the bridge over Volkhovitz, Lieutenant Karlov encountered the Nazi troops. A battle ensued. Fearing that the enemy would seize the bridge, Karlov brought the armored car to the crossing and took up the defense, keeping up a steady fire. The enemy began shelling the bridge with artillery. When the wooden deck was broken, the front wheels fell through it and the car got stuck. The crew's attempts to free the BA-10 were unsuccessful. Under heavy Nazi fire, the commander ordered the crew to retreat and blew up the car with a grenade so that the enemy wouldn't get it. The crew successfully reached their home base and the BA-10, after being shelled by the Germans, fell into the water. Vladimir Kopyshev reported that Alexander Karlov died bravely in 1942 near Misnoibor. The fate of three other BA-10 crew members is still unknown. The combat vehicle was lifted in three parts, which were loaded into a truck and sent for restoration. Now we are waiting for the full restoration of the armored car and hope to see it go over the bridge that it had to defend 80 years ago. A German ship A lot of ships and submarines lie beneath the sea. Most of them went down during the World War II. The search expeditions find sunken ships around the world every year. Divers of the Underwater Research Center of the Russian Geographical Society found the T-31 destroyer belonging to the German Navy, which sunk on the June 20, 1944, in the Gulf of Finland near the island of Norva. The wreck rests at a depth of 53 meters. 
As members of the search party stated, the hull of the ship was very well preserved, although it was broken into two identical parts, located at a considerable distance due to the force of the blast. The historical background is this. During the battle, a detachment of boats of senior Lieutenant Taroninka and Lieutenant Bushuev took the T-31 and T-30 destroyers into pincers. All the command of the Third Reich Road, the Russian boats maneuvered so quickly that we couldn't even aim our weapons for a shot. This victory, during which the German destroyer T-31 went down as a result of a torpedo hit, and the T-30 fled from the battlefield was a major milestone. Thanks to it, the Soviet troops were able to land on the shore and take a position in the offensive operation in Vyborg. As the searchers said, they were able to restore the appearance of the ship and pick up a lot of artifacts from the destroyer. A binocular, which, despite being underwater for a long time, was very well preserved, to signal flares and many other items. After the restoration, all the raised artifacts will be transferred to the museum for display. The place of death of the T-31 will be marked on sea maps as a danger to navigation and most likely will be recognized as a sea burial since 82 German sailors died and their remains still lie on the seabed. The rest of the crew members were rescued by Soviet ships. Return of a pilot In the Tosnesky district of the Leningrad region, members of a search party took out the completely preserved remains of a Soviet 22-year-old pilot Sergei Fadeev from a swamp near the village of Pishanka. The pilot went missing 77 years ago. His plane was shut down near Leningrad. The fighter, together with the pilot, fell into the swamp, where Fadeev's body was literally embalmed. Fighter pilot Sergei Fadeev took off on March 20, 1943, on an American-made P-40 Tomahawk aircraft. He accompanied the Al-2 attack aircraft. They attacked enemy positions near the village of Ulyanka. The operation was successful, but suddenly two German fighters appeared. In the air battle, both Soviet planes were shut down. The first pilot escaped by parachute, and the second one, Sergei Fadeev, crashed into the swamp alone with a plane. Fadeev's fighter was pierced with bullets and shells from the tail to the engine. This conclusion was made by the traces of holes on the fragments found. One of the shells exploded in the cockpit, and the pilot was killed by shrapnel in the air. Then the aircraft caught fire and went into a dive. The crash site was discovered accidentally during the search operations. The identity of the pilot was established by the numbers on the aircraft fuselage. When the body was taken out, the searchers were amazed at the condition of the remains. He looked as if an airplane had just crashed. The searchers said that the body was embalmed after lying in the aircraft oil and fuel in the absence of oxygen. They also found the personal belongings. A medallion was lying in a breeches pocket, probably with a picture of a pilot's beloved one. Unfortunately, the image hadn't survived. There also was a pocket address book with his friend's contacts and tobacco wrapped in newspaper in the pocket of the flight suit. The date was preserved on a newspaper fragment, March 18, 1943. With the help of volunteers, Fadeev's relatives were found in a week, children of his brother who also fought on the fronts during the war. They live in Nizhny Novgorod, the homeland of Sergei Fadeev. Heroic pilot Fadeev was buried at the memorial cemetery in his homeland. A parcel with guns. Three well-preserved German World War II machine guns were found in a parcel sent from Latvia by employees of the Polish State Tax Administration. The package was supposed to be delivered to the UK. The MG-34 machine guns were delivered by a courier. 
The parcel was at the carrier's office when the customs officers found it. The package aroused interest because there was no information in the documents declaring its contents. After examining the weapons, it turned out that the machine guns were dug up at the World War II battlefields and are no longer suitable for shooting but can only be used as museum exhibits. On January 25, 2020, children played in the building of the Brest Fortress, where the first battle between the Red Army and the German troops took place. The boy said that he was walking with his friends in a fortress on the rampart of the Cobrin fortification. On the mound, the guys came across an object sticking out the sand. It turned out to be an old gun. The boy brought it home and his mother took it to the police. The find was a German Walther Lute Pistoli 1934 signal pistol. The weapon was in a very good condition. This find was discovered by a worker when dismantling an old building. In the attic of the house, a bundle with two guns inside was found. He reported the find to the police. In a survey of the former residence, it was not possible to find out to whom this weapon could belong. During the examination, it was possible to establish that one of the pistols is the Hungarian Femaru M37 9mm caliber 1937 model. The second gun is a German Browning caliber 635mm 1906. More recently, when repairing the floor of an old house in Poland, two antique pistols were found. The police is trying to find out who they belong to and how they got there. Judging by the rust, these two revolvers lay in a cachet for a long time. They were fully loaded. One was an Austrian-made Reston Gasser M1898. The second looked like a pocket bullet type revolver. 5. Dunn Bomb in October 2020, a five-ton bomb was exploded in Poland. It was discovered during the construction work at the bottom of a ship channel. This munition was dropped by British aircraft on German positions, but the bomb hit the water and didn't explode. It was half-submerged in the river silt and posed a great danger. The sappers decided to detonate the bomb on the spot. The explosive charge in such a munition is 2.5 tons. No one was injured during the planned explosion. Now, sappers work on finding other dangerous objects at the bottom of the river. An armored artillery tractor The Luftwaffe armored artillery tractor, which sank on January 18, 1945, while crossing the Pilica River, was raised by a group of military enthusiasts from the Pilica Friends Association. The tractor plunged into the depth of the river during the retreat of German troops from the fortified Pilica line, which was broken through by the Red Army flanking maneuver. Most likely, it is one of the prototypes of vehicles that never entered mass production, but were used at the end of the war on the Eastern Front. This is confirmed by the original license plate Luftchik WL323863, indicating that it belongs to the Air Force. The history of this particular design dates back to 1934, when German engineers began working on the creation of an armored tractor, which was used to tow an 88mm anti-aircraft gun. The vehicle was raised in 1998, and by 2003 it was completely restored. 99 bombs during the World War II, the Crimea became the scene of bloody battles between the Red Army and German troops. A huge amount of unexploded ammunition lies in the ground and water till our times. In the city of Sevastopol, sappers worked to disarm the World War II ammunition. More than 4,000 dangerous finds were destroyed, including 99 various aerial bombs, which posed a great danger to the city residents. The bombs were taken to the military training ground and destroyed by detonation. Finds on the armored boat The armored boat BK-31 was raised from the bottom of the Volga River in 2017. 
During the search work, the remains of 11 crew members were found. Their dog tags were empty, but according to their personal belongings, experts identified five soldiers. A large number of weapons and ammunition was also found. Two pistols, 11 rifles, 9 PPS submachine guns, a machine gun, 70 grenades, 50,000 rounds of ammunition and 180 shells. Among the weapons, a few rare ones were found. For example, a PPS machine gun with a ramp-type sight. Today, there are only few of them left in good condition. Most of the weapons are in excellent condition as they have been covered with sand and silt in the hold of the boat for many years. A huge number of documents, books and letters were also found. Some of them were still readable. To date, the boat has been restored. BK-31 and all the objects found can be seen in the Russia My History Museum. A Pistols Collector Another weapons collector from Moscow was detained this year in January. During searches, 15 pistols from various manufacturers were found and sent out for analysis. Some of the items are rare and of museum value. In addition, 93 ammunition of various calibers was seized. The man explained that he was a collector and had been collecting these items for many years. Homemade Museum in a man's house, the police found a whole museum of weapons. There were 17 pistols, 2 AK rifles, 6 rifles, as well as 3 pieces of cold steel and 3,000 cartridges. Many weapons of the World War II were also found. Almost all of them were completely new from long storage warehouses. After the examination, the rare weapon will go to the museum, and the man faces prison term for illegal possession of weapons and ammunition. Golden Walther Russian police detained a man at the time of the illegal sale of a Walther pistol covered in gold. During the search at the detainee's residence in the city of Zheleznovodsk, firearms, their main parts, over a thousand cartridges of various calibers were found. In addition, the police confiscated a real rarity – the Mauser C96 pistol, model 1896. The detainee explained that he was engaged in excavation at the battle sites of the World War II. He restored all the weapons he found to a combat state. He had previously bought several weapons from unknown sellers and kept them at home. But since he needed cash quick, the man decided to sell a part of his exhibits. A Lord of War The police detained a man suspected of acquiring and storing weapons. He organized a workshop in his apartment, converting bear weapons into combat ones. During the searches, the PPS-43, PPSH-41 submachine guns, three Makarov pistols, two TT pistols, and 13 revolvers of the Nagan system were seized. In addition, more than 7,000 rounds of various calibers, about 300 grams of gunpowder, as well as tools for arms repairing and manufacturing. A criminal case was opened against the man. An arms cache A searcher from Kaliningrad is engaged in World War II excavations. Until July 4, 1946, the city was called Königsberg and belonged to Germany. At the last stage of the World War II, it hosted fierce battles between the Red Army and the Nazis. Lots of guns were left lying in the ground and water after the battles. One of the last seasons turned out to be very rich in various finds for the man. More than a dozen machine guns were found alone. A couple of German MP40s was found in good condition as well as countless rifles. All the weapons found were deactivated to avoid liability issues. The searcher hopes to find the Amber Room. He says it's hidden somewhere in the basements of the former Königsberg. But so far, his efforts were unsuccessful. Military equipment from the river In our past videos, we talked about the equipment raised in Russia from the Don River. 
They were the German Sturmgeschütz self-propelled gun, the Stuart M3 tank and the Soviet Stalinets S-65 tractor. If you haven't seen the video, we will leave the link to it in the description below. Today we will show you where this equipment is located now. The self-propelled gun and the tank were cleaned of sealed and rust and exhibited in the Moscow Museum of the Patriot Park. Whether their restoration will be carried out or they will be left the way they presently are is still unknown. The Stalinist tractor was installed on the pedestal in the form of a monument in the place where it was raised. Recently, several more such tractors have been found. Perhaps for this reason, museums are not that much interested in them. But maybe the reason is also in its bad condition. The engine block was broken during the bombing of the crossing, and it is very difficult to restore it without the original engine. German uniform. A few years ago, diggers found a large can containing a full set of uniforms for a German Luftwaffe pilot and a personal beige. Who and why made such a cache remains a mystery. Perhaps the pilot himself changed into civilian clothes so as not to be captured and hid his belongings to come back for them later. The find was in excellent condition and now joined a private collection. Mauser Much rumors from the city of Grodna unexpectedly discovered a World War II gun in the forest. The weapon turned out to be a short-barreled Mauser produced in 1943 in Germany. They put the gun into the basket and took it to the police. There were eight rounds in the clip and another one was in the barrel. The weapon was most likely captured and belonged to one of the partisans. In the war years, there were a partisan detachment in the place of the find. In 1944, it was trapped by the Nazis. There is a fragmentation hit on the handle of the gun, which led to the weapon malfunction. Apparently, for this reason, the Mauser was thrown out alone with the holster. The police officers couldn't find any other weapons at that place, but they came across an old wooden cross. Perhaps it was the last owner of this pistol who died in the explosion. A Russian search team found the regimental banner of the 285th Rifle Regiment of the 183rd Division of the 11th Army of the 24th Latvian Rifle Corps. An unexpected find was discovered in the Novgorod region. The well-preserved relic was recognized by the aguilets and very readable inscriptions. According to the searchers, the find was made near the German dugout. This place is full of weapons and ammunition of both Soviet and German production. Everything is mixed up. The banner was found with a metal detector. It reacted to the aluminium tip that was wrapped in the banner. The package was neatly folded and tied with an army belt. Most likely, the bannerman was wounded or surrounded, and he buried it so that the banner didn't fall into the enemy's hands. The loss of the banner was the serious violation of the military regulations. Such a unit should have been disbanded. Historians say that the 285th Infantry Division took part in the offensive in July 1941, during which General Munchtime himself was surrounded and miraculously managed to get out of the encirclement. This forced Hitler to postpone the attack on Leningrad for two months. The banner could have been lost in early August, after reinforcements approached the Germans and they launched an offensive, capturing Stara Rusa and Demyansk. A fighter This sensational find was made in the Moscow region. The searchers found the plane of the legendary pilot Viktor Talalihin. 
In 1941, he was one of the first to carry out a night ram, knocking down a German bomber on the outskirts of Moscow. This feat went down in history and brought him fame as a hero. The plane was found thanks to a local resident who saw a crater in the forest with some aircraft wreckage nearby. The engine was well preserved, however, the propeller couldn't be found. By the number plates, it was possible to establish the belonging 177th Fighter Regiment. This combat vehicle was decommissioned on August 8, 1941, after an air ramming. In August 1941, the pilot was only 23. The bombing of Moscow began in July 1941. The skies of the capital were defaced by anti-aircraft corners and fighter pilots. The ram often solved the outcome of the air battle. In the Luftwaffe, a circular was sent out, forbidding aircraft to approach Soviet fighters closer than 100 meters in order to avoid ramming. Viktor Dolalikhin never knew whom he would meet in the sky – an enemy fighter or a bomber. Seeing the Henkel, Dolalikhin decided to attack it. A few seconds and the bomber was very close. It is known that the pilot used up all the ammunition and there was no choice left. As Victor himself said, I made the decision to ram the plane, sacrifice myself, but not to let the enemy go. After the impact, the German bomber fell apart and fell to the ground, and Talalikin's I-16 plane lost control and also began to fall. The pilot was lucky. During the fall, the plane turned over and junior lieutenant was able to jump with a parachute. For this feat, he received the title of hero. This is the highest award of the Soviet Union. In subsequent battles, Viktor Talalikin shot down five more German aircraft. He died in an air battle near Podolsk on October 27, 1941. A Soviet headquarters safe A unique and priceless find was made by searchers in the Tver region. A safe with secret documents from the war was found in the Aleninsky district. According to the searchers, the safe was hidden during the retreat of the Red Army in 1942. Thanks to this discovery, it is possible to restore the chronology of fierce battles in the distant 1942 as accurately as possible. During the war, Alenina was literally located on the front line. So the safe contains a lot of valuable documents as well as maps of the burial of soldiers. All these years they were listed as missing. The contents of the Iron Vault are of great value not only for historians but also for criminologists. They open an unknown page in history. The Iron Safe contains hundreds of staff documents of the 22nd Army, which historians call forgotten. Almost nothing has been known about the fate of thousands of soldiers who participated in the Battle of Rzhev. The documents turned yellow, but the text is quite readable. The safe contains all the secrets, cards, documents, losses. The maps even have crosses where they buried their comrades and where they held their defenses. The battles of Rzhev are considered one of the bloodiest episodes of the Great Patriotic War. Historians are still arguing about how many soldiers died there. The numbers range from 500,000 to 2 million. Hitler called Rzhev a springboard to Moscow and therefore threw his best divisions there. The 22nd Army fought off enemy attacks for several months. From historians, it became known that three such safes were hidden. One was found in 70s, but the third is yet to be found. A German headquarters safe The World War II swept across a huge part of the Russian territory. To this day, searchers find huge amount of weapons and ammunition, but sometimes incredible finds come across. Another such amazing find was discovered by war diggers a couple years ago. This is not even a find, but a real time capsule, since this iron German safe has lain in the ground for over 70 years. Its condition was deplorable. The box was badly damaged by moisture, and all the papers inside were almost destroyed. In addition to the documents, the stamps and seals of some military units were kept in the safe. 
and the best find was the award with a ribbon, which was apparently kept there by the owner of the safe. Under what circumstances he left his property in positions, we certainly do not know. Perhaps he died during shelling, or urgently had to retreat during the attack of the Soviet troops. In any case, now this find is a part of history and will replenish someone's homemade museum. The gun In the city of Karaganda, the police seized World War II weapons. The 1944 Spagen submachine gun and the 1943 Mosin rifle. This weapon was kept at home by an elderly man since the war itself. After the examination, it turned out that the PPSH-41 doesn't have a barrel and it is not suitable for shooting, but the rifle was in combat condition. Since the weapon was stored indoors, there were no traces of corrosion or rust on it. After the examination, the police promised to transfer the weapon to the local museum. A soldier A lot of people write in the comments that there is no need to dig up battlefields in search for dead soldiers. Someone says that it's a sin to disturb the dead, and so one is sure that a lot of time has passed and it's no longer possible to find the relatives of the deceased. Now, we will tell a story in which the searchers were able not only to identify the soldier, but also to find his relatives. In the Novgorod region in 2029, school children from the Kirov region spent the whole of September searching for those killed during the World War II. And now, a long-awaited find. The Order of the Red Star and the Death Medallion were discovered among the belongings of the found Red Army soldier. According to the number of the award, the name of the soldier was established. Sergeant Ivan Pavlovich Pliskov, who fought as a part of the 86th Separate Rifle Brigade. After a long work in the archives, the relatives of the Knight of the Red Star Order were found, a son and a granddaughter of the Sergeant Ivan Pliskov. The searchers handed over all the personal belongings and the order to his relatives. Another war hero finally returned home. On the 5th of March in Sevastopol a torpedo boat G5, which sank during the Second World War, was lifted from the bottom of the Black Sea. The boat sank at the exit from the Corinthian Bay, where a brigade of torpedo boats of the Black Sea Fleet was based during the defense of Sevastopol 1941-1942. The ship lay underwater for 78 years. Despite this, its body is well preserved. It was at a depth of 12 meters. G5 is a small warship. It was intended to defeat enemy military and transport ships. During the Second World War, the crews of such boats went to night raids, attacked the enemy, landed troops, evacuated the wounded, and rescued the pilots who had been shot down from the water. The discovered boat was part of the Black Sea Fleet Brigade, which was based in Quarantine Bay. Before lifting, divers examined the boat for torpedoes and other explosive objects. The ship was reached using a floating crane. Currently, the search group is working in the archives to establish the boat number and crew names. It is already known that during the defense of Sevastopol, enemy aircraft were able to sink six boats of this series. With a high degree of probability, we can say that this boat is number 61, which sank on June 15, 1942. In the future, it is planned to restore the appearance of the boat and install it on a pedestal as a monument to the heroic defense of Sevastopol. I hope that soon we will find out the names of the crew and their future fate. In 2004, in the village of Iskrena, Chukaski region, the Panzerkampf Wagon Panther, the killer vehicle of the most famous SS Viking tank division, was lifted from under the soil. In his book, Victims of the German's Victory in the Kasansky Cauldron, Helmut Vogel writes, There was only one bridge across the Spolka in Iskrena, and it looked solid and credible enough. The first panther entered the bridge and safely drove to the north shore of Spolka, but under the weight of the second panther the bridge broke down. The tank recovered in the village of Iskrina is the same panther tank under the weight of which the bridge collapsed. In this photo you can see how the powerful war machine helplessly goes down under the water.
Nowadays, there are about 20 pieces of Panzerkampf Panther tanks of various modification and varying degrees of completeness. Two in Fort Knox, USA, four in Serma, France, and one each in the museums of Europe, Canada, USA, and Russia. Plus, a few incomplete hulls, which are also very highly valued as historical rarities, but in the strict sense they cannot be considered. So here, in 2004, in the area of village Polka, Cherkasky region, Ukraine, a severely damaged panther was found. Pay attention to the damages on the port side. What the shell was it? Of course, the tank, although badly damaged, didn't find a place in the museums of Ukraine. Now Cherkasky panther is in the Autotechnik Museum, Zinheim, Germany, and it's already impossible to get it back from there. By the way, the tank took its place in the exposition only in 2007. Here are a few excerpts from the search party journal we couldn't pass by. At the panther excavation, Vladimir Kosenko lost the tip of his index finger. The caterpillar of the tank decomposed in his arms. He was entirely there, he said. He managed to remove his head, but not his hand. Another moment was remembered for a lifetime. During the excavation, a friend of Vladimir hit the shell capsule and it hissed immediately. There were six people in the pit, including a Russian banker, but only two realized what could happen. Both froze with shovels in their hands, instinctively closing their eyes. About 10 seconds later, when it became clear that there would be no explosion, Vladimir opened his eyes. His friend straightened up and said in a muffled voice, I gonna get vodka. In 2017, a dive bomber PE-2 with the crew was raced out of the swamp near Varfolomeevka in Primorsky region. The plane was at a depth of 5 meters. With the help of an excavator, the searchers managed to get the details of PE-2, the machine gun of a gunner radio man along with a parachute. This indicates that the crew couldn't leave the falling plane. The navigator's clipboard was the most valuable find. The navigational ruler, the documents and the maps were in a very good condition. In the evening, the searchers were able to pass the documents. There was a newspaper Trivoga, among the other finds, dated the 2nd of May 1942. When it dried out, it was possible to read almost every line. An engine with the serial numbers was also raised, what made possible to establish the names of the crew members. An interesting find was discovered by a searcher from the Smolensk region in 2013. It was a gas AAA truck. Here is how the searcher himself describes this case. The truck was found even earlier, in 2009. We have always passed by it and made a couple of photos and smoked sitting on its cap. Those were the times when we searched without GPS. We spent the whole season there and this truck was the only thing we found. Well, that time we've decided to do nothing about it and left it in the swamp. Four years have passed, the year 2013 has come and our attitude towards the finds has changed dramatically. We decided to go back to those places and see if the truck was still there. We left in the morning, planning to reach the spot by noon. We spread out in the woods and began searching. Four hours passed, but still no sign of the truck. We almost decided that somebody had already towed it. So we got tired and took a little smoke break. Suddenly we heard a tracked vehicle moving our way. It was not a coincidence, the woods were not cut down there and no one would get there in transit. Someone sold us out and so-called competitors were following us. In this situation, those who find the vehicle are the winners. So the search intensified. We began to jump over the debris like Olympic champions with saws, backpacks, shovels and a gun. I literally ran my heart out. Good luck was on our side. Luckily, I saw a piece of tin when I was jumping over another tree trunk. When I pulled it out from under the roots, I realized that it was a part of the truck door. The truck itself was somewhere nearby, but the forest has dramatically changed over these years. After having climbed a fallen tree, we finally saw the truck we came for. 
30 minutes later our competitors came up and we just discussed the situation without any rudeness and insults, so they drove away. We continued to feast on the skeleton of the legendary truck. After lunch we began to clear the cap and searched with a metal detector all around. We understood that the vehicle was burnt. A truck was loaded with 37 mm German shells and the shells were scattered around the area. Three German helmets, two bayonet knives were found under the truck. The tow bar was not standard, but the German one. All proved that the Nazis drove the truck, but it was burnt. After it was burnt, the engine and the front axle were removed, and all that came under heavy fire was left. The truck was cleared and the photo shoot began. Unfortunately, I didn't shoot the process of a truck expert, but it was a very laborious process and it took three days. Two years after the truck was taken out, it was restored. Another story is from a searcher from the Belgorod region. Unfortunately, he decided not to describe the discovery of this military artifact in detail, but the uniqueness of this find itself deserves to be told about. In 2017, the perfectly preserved German motorcycle Zandab KS600 was found. Only the rear wheel was missing. The state of this find is simply unique. After cleaning out, it turned out that the motorcycle was painted yellow over the original color a tactical sign of a motorcycle platoon and the emblem of the 14th Wehrmacht tank division were of particular interest. The motorcycle was a two-seater with some kind of obscure metal box suitcase and a completely preserved exhaust system. Even both license plates were in place. Only the rear wheel wasn't found. A hot debate broke out about how to restore this vehicle. Some suggested removing the top coat of paint, while the others suggested leaving it as it is for a museum. There were also those who wanted to disassemble the motorcycle in parts for sale. Three weeks later, the lucky searcher ended the dispute himself, making it clear that the motorcycle was already sold. In the summer 2014, work on raising the gas MM truck from the riverbed of Mustar River was underway for three days alone. It was finally recovered from 4 meters depth and delivered to the Novgorod Kremlin. We were able to examine it in detail only this summer. The truck was recognized as gas MM. The remains of a driver were found in the cab, and 120 mm divisional mortar and 34 mines in the back of the truck. Later, the regional demining team and Novgorod rescuers joined the inspection work. The remains of the driver were also removed that time. They were handed over to the members of the Novgorod regional search expedition, the Valley. However, not a single item that could be used to prove the soldier's identity was found in his pocket. It could be a dog tag, medals, or personal items with inscription. It was only clear that he died in the winter 1944, during the offensive operation of the Soviet troops to liberate Novgorod. But the searchers do not lose hope of finding information about the deceased in the military archives. The loss of the truck with the divisional mortar and full ammunition should have been reflected in the frontline reports. By the way, recently we've got confirmation of the version that there was more than one soldier in that truck. Four small arms were also found in the cab and on board, rifles and machine guns. So perhaps the searches from the valley will be able to establish the names of several more soldiers who died there. The truck was perfectly preserved in clay, except for the cab. The tires looked like new. They were even inflated. The frame and the engine by the Czechoslovakian Vata Company 1939 release were intact. After half a year, the truck was completely restored. Nowadays, it can be seen in the local museum. In the spring of 1917, several units of military vehicles from the times of the Second World War were lifted from the bottom of the Tal River in the Voronezh region. At this point, in 1942, a crossing took place and the Red Army troops retreated to the other side of the river. 
This is the American light tank General Stuart. It was supplied to the Red Army under land lease. Also, the German self-propelled artillery Stuck III and the Soviet diesel tractor Stalinist, which was used to tow heavy guns, were found. The work was compromised by a strong current and very poor visibility. There was no tower on the General Stuart tank. Local residents say that in the 70s of the 20th century they were already trying to get it, but only the tower could be torn off since the tank was heavily submerged in silt. The tank had full ammunition and two Browning machine guns. The tractor was in excellent condition and fully complete. Apparently, during the raid of German aircraft the vehicles were flooded. Historians couldn't answer how a German artillery could be in this place as well. It was badly damaged. It can be assumed that the German units also tried to cross the river, but were attacked by Soviet troops or aircraft, and the Stug III was defeated and sank. A lot of ammunition, two kitchen wagons and the remains of trucks that were yet to be lifted were found by divers. On July 14, 2016, in the surrounding area of the village Ukrainian Bulovka in Voronezh region, the Soviet medium tank T-3476 was raised. This machine was produced by the Stalingrad plant and is considered unique since the T-3476 of this type no longer exists. This is the only vehicle out of 1,000 produced. All tanks of this type were destroyed in the battles of the 41st and 42nd. The tank managed to take part in the hostilities. At least two hits from a German anti-tank gun were counted on the hull, and the engine was broken. Fortunately, the crew was not in the tank, but the ammunition was inside. There was also a Dektarev machine gun and discs with cartridges for it. After the ammunition was removed, the T-34 was sent to Moscow to the Armed Force Museum in the Kubinka, where it was waiting for its turn for restoration. The historians faced unknown circumstances of an air fighter crash during the Second World War in the Murmansk region, where the crashed plane was found. The divers salvaged the vehicle, the operation lasted several days. The American Air Cobra, which was supplied by the Allies more than 70 years ago, laid at the bottom of the lake in a dense layer of silt. Divers did their best not to bother silt, because the visibility became zero and the operation had to be interrupted. Then the find was towed to the shore. Only there the air fighter was lifted out of the water with crane. The experts didn't find the remains of the pilot in the cockpit. In addition, the wind was chopped down as if someone tried to get to the fuel tank to drain the fuel. Most likely, when the plane crashed, it got stuck in ice and the dead pilot was taken out. But the experts still need to have this version checked. In this video, we will show a selection of weapons found in old houses and sheds. This find was made during cleaning up the barn in April 2017. A guy dismantles the wooden shields between the beams, where his family stored grain. After partial dismantling, he noticed a metal box about one and a half meters from the ground on the beam. The box was about 30 by 15 centimeters. It was rewound with wire and there was something inside wrapped in doll rags. He decided to check the contents of the box before throwing it away. In a piece of dirty cloth, probably the sleeve of a man's shirt, someone hid two pistols several decades ago. The larger was a Walther P-38 9mm caliber, which has been in German armed forces since 1940, as well as the German Lilliput 1926 model 6 and 35mm caliber. The 360 kg Nazi Eagle, raised by researchers in 2006, from the scuttled ship of the Third Reich, Admiral Graf Spee, will be sold at an auction. The Nazi symbol was found by researchers in La Plata Bay near Montevideo, where a German cruiser sank 80 years ago after one of the first naval battles of the Second World War, having destroyed 11 British merchant ships by that time. The corresponding decision was made by the court in Uruguay. It was in the territorial waters of this country, in the Gulf of La Plata, that a valuable historical artifact was found. Experts estimate the possible sale amount at 20 million pounds. 
However, Alfredo Echigere, who led the expedition to extract the Nazi symbol from the seabed more than 13 years ago, expects to gain at least 50 million pounds. According to him, museums from all over the world, the German government and private collectors showed interest in buying. The representative of the Uruguayan Jewish Committee, Ernst Kreimerman, is convinced that the eagle should go to the museum but not to the private trader. In turn, the director of the Commission on the Cultural Heritage of Uruguay, Miguel S. Morris, considers it important to prevent the illegal circulation of cultural and historical objects, while noting that he had nothing against additional earnings for researchers. According to Chigure, the eagle should be in public domain so that the world can learn from the past. Russia has its own similar eagle, which is stored in the Museum of the Federal Security Service. This eagle is unique. It used to adorn the main building of Nazi Germany. It weighs 350 kilograms. The wings of the bird are pierced by bullets. This eagle adorned the Reich Chancellery Mosaic Hall. In 2019, a Russian treasure hunter from the Orenburg region discovered a cache of two officer checkers of 1838. Such findings are extremely rare and unique, and the accidental find of two pieces at once is a very surprising case for those who are interested in ancient edged weapons. It can be assumed that the checkers were hidden by the owner during the Civil War in the early 20th century. The metal of the blades was very rotten, but the rest of the details can be used for the restoration of the other samples. A box with gold coins, bars and jewelry, which has been lying under the beam of an old Jewish house for more than 70 years, was found during the reconstruction of an old building in the city of Grodno. The casket contained 23 gold coins of the Russian Empire and the interwar Polish period, the so-called Jadwig, more than a dozen rings, two chains, several gold bars, gilded tooth crowns and several merchant documents. The total weight of gold products was about 500 grams. We can say that this is a gold deposit. Perhaps someone saved it for a rainy day. Now we save money in dollars and euros and this person did it in gold, said Jan, a historian and junior researcher at the Grodno Historical and Archaeological Museum of Lelovich. According to preliminary and conservative estimates, the value of the treasure can be at least $15,000. And here is another find from the time of the Civil War. There were rumors that during the advance of the Red Army on the outskirts of the village, cars with weapons were hidden. Search group decided to check this legend. Literally, at the first tower, the metal detector showed the presence of a large amount of iron. There was a huge ammunition depot in 30 centimeters from the surface. Shells and grenades of the early 20th century lay in several large pits. There was a very rich specimen of the Zelensky grenade among the heap of ammunition. None of the museums had a sample of it, and its model could be determined only by description. A group of Russian divers from the city of Novorossiysk took part in raising sunken Second World War military equipment from the Black Sea. A group of four divers examined several German Stummgeschuss III self-propelled cones at a depth of 20 meters. All of them were an ascent of transport ship sunk in 1943 by a Soviet submarine. Within a few days, it was possible to raise part of the military equipment and deliver it to the shore. Now the restorers will take care of it. In the Sumy region, in a Nikolaev Moscow train compartment, a cache with a MP40 machine gun and a Mauser pistol was discovered. The train followed through the Zirnavoye railway checkpoint. Border guards and customs officers were already waiting for it, because they received information on the possible cross-border movement of weapons. The State Border Service of Ukraine reports that a service dog discovered the find as a result of checking. Packets of weapons were hidden under the lid of the heating system. The owner of the find wished to remain anonymous. The weapons were seized. Now the circumstances of the offense are being clarified and the persons involved in moving the fines across the border are being identified.
Aleppo, Mason Company on Elbrus. In July 1942, the Germans launched an offensive to the Caucasus. The operation was codenamed Edelweiss, which later became associated with the 1st Fermach Mountain Rifle Division, which participated in the capture of the Grey Peaks. The Soviet command, in our opinion, neglected the planning of the defense of the Caucasus, so most of the territories was seized actually without a fight. The mistake of the Red Army was that the Soviet generals considered the Caucasus as an impregnable wall on the German's way, so only the most easily passable passes were defended. This allowed the well-equipped Germans to enter through the mountain passes to the rear of the Red Army and to master quickly all the key heights. Already on August 21, the Germans hoisted their flags on the western peak of Elbrus and took up defense in a mountain hotel on the southern slope of the highest point in Europe. Guren Grigorens personally volunteered to go on an assault on the mountain. At the same time, the party of the young lieutenant had neither climbing experience nor equipment. The offensive seemed suicide, but Grigorens still took a risk. On the night of September 27th, avoiding visual contact, the former hairdresser brought the fighters to the approaches to the hotel, to the height of about 10,000 meters. The soldiers were not even dressed for the weather. September 98, 1943, at 4 a.m. the Grigorans party began the assault. The Germans met the Red Army with hard machine gun fire and, as it turned out later, the Germans exceeded Grigorian's party by two times in human resources and firepower. The report to the headquarters demonstrates the progress of the battle. The party of Lieutenant Grigorian's moved forward along the snowy field and was stopped by strong gun and machine gun fire from common heights in the area of the 11th shelter. Encountering enemy fire, Grigorian's immediately deployed a party and led the attack, leaving no reserves. The enemy concentrated the entire mass of fire on the party, frustrating the main forces. Grigorians, neglecting death, shouting hooray and forestalling, attacked the enemy twice, moving forward, and only having lost three quarters of the personnel, he stayed in place and fought until 2 p.m. of 28th of September. Having lost more than a half of the company, wounded and killed, Grigorians decided to take one of the hollows on the outskirts of the hotel and keep the defense to the last drop of blood. To the Germans' proposal to surrender and guarantees not only of preserving lives but also freedom, the mountain huntsmen suggested that the Red Army soldiers surrender their weapons and return to the location of their units. Grigorians answered with a decisive refusal. They shot back from Nazis to the last man. No one surrendered and no one left position. All dead. After a mortar attack, the positions of the Red Army fell silent. The Germans, struck by the staunchness of the Soviet soldiers, rushed to the hollow to get the wounded Red Army soldiers, but no one was alive. It turned out to recapture the Caucasus from the Soviet unions only by January 20, 1943, and on February 13, a red flag was again hoisted over Elbrus. The fate of Lieutenant Grigorians remained for a long time shrouded in mystery. Only in 2014, the remains of a dead company and the mummified body of the Lieutenant were discovered in a glacier near the Pastuhof rocks. 500 kg bomb in the Voronezh region, a tractor driver carried out excavation work and dug up an aerial bomb from the Second World War. He reported this case to the police, and the military representatives came to the place of the find. It was decided to detonate the bomb without moving it, since its transportation was too dangerous. Four meters of sand were placed on top to reduce the risk of projection of fragments and the force of the explosion itself, since the houses were too close. After the explosion, the crater was 10 meters wide. The Panzerkampfwagen 3 tank in Ukraine, in 1996, the German Panzerkampfwagen III tank was raised from the Yuzhny Buk river. It drowned, having fallen from the pontoon crossing in the area of the Voskresensk city. The location of the tank was reported by the German side. The combat vehicle lay at a depth of 10 meters, partially immersed in silt. 
divers had to road mud to get it out. With a winch, the tank was pulled to the shore and then raised by a crane. Panzerkampfwagen 3 was in excellent condition without any damage. The sappers examined the tank and reported the presence of 70% of the ammunition. The tank was cleared of sales and transported for restoration. One thousand killers bomb. In Belarus, at a depth of one meter, an excavator hooked an object that looked like a bomb. All work was stopped and the mining brigade was called. It turned out to be a German bomb weighing one ton. The explosive in it weighed 210 kilograms. If it would explode, the fragments would be found in the area of 2,000 meters. The bomb technician inspected the bomb since the time detonator could have been working due to the impact of the excavator arm heat. Having cleaned the sand and soil in the place of fuse, it was possible to read the year 1942. It was decided to bring the bomb to the military training ground for destruction. Already at dusk, the shell was mined and an explosion was made in complete darkness. On the 1st of January 1943, a Soviet submarine L-24 didn't return to the base as planned. On the 11th of January 1943, an entry appeared in the Black Sea Fleet's historical journal that L-24 had been considered lost in a combat mission. Reason, time and place were not established. In 1988, a Bulgarian Institute of Oceanography research vehicle discovered an object identified as a submarine at the bottom of the Black Sea near Cape Chablis. On the 7th of June 2009, during the search expedition bowed to the ships of the Great Victory, the remains of a submarine lying at a depth of 59 meters were investigated. It turned out to be the missing L-24. Divers cleared the full 100 mm gun and read the Russian marking B-24 and 069 below, which corresponds to the L-24 submarine. The hatches were locked, the stern stealing wheel was in a position to raise. A chain of main wrap was wound around the right screw. There was a large tear port side below a waterline in the area of the third compartment. At the time of the submarine's loss, there were no minefields in this place. Apparently, the boat came across a mine to cough by a storm. For three days, divers cleaned the submarine hatch from shells. After opening, an air bubble burst from the hatch and a rescue buoy surfaced behind it. It's purposed to pull a cable so that sailors could float to the surface holding on to it. But on the day of the L-24 loss, no one took advantage of it. The next day, a videographer entered the L-24 conning tower. He filmed the combat post of the submarine. There was molten metal everywhere. It made it clear the boat was on high temperature fire. After the mine explosion, people could only survive in the distant F compartments, but they couldn't get out of the boat. Having made sure that there were no documents in the burnt cabin, divers closed the hatches of the boat now forever. As one of the expedition participants said, he had a feeling of someone's watching him, even when he was all alone. In July 1941, during the Soviet counterattack near Lepel, one BT tank drowned in a swamp. It happened near the village of Shebeki, Orsha district in Belarus. The crew managed to leave the vehicle before it went down. 
At first, the tank didn't sink so deeply and even a handrail antenna sticked out of the water. After the war, the antenna, made of copper, was dismantled by a local resident. In the early 70s, they tried to get the tank out, but it only went deeper under the water. The new stage of the BT recovery began in 1998, when the search group was created specifically for this lifting and restoration work. The group arrived at the place in November 1998. An excavator, a pump, and a powerful tractor were allocated to the group to raise the tank. In order to pull the tank out, a special log structure was constructed. A diver in special equipment went down under the ice and fastened towing cables to the tank in the water black of silt. The raised machine turned out to be a BT-7 tank of the 1935 release with a cylindrical turret of BT-5 and T-26. The presence of the radio station indicated that it was a command tank. The condition amazed the searchers. When the tank was cleaned, they found everything in its place. The bolts and nuts and all the tools, gasoline in tanks, shells and boxes and full disks of cartridges. Only the radio station was destroyed by acid leaking from the batteries. The restorers got the tank going in no time. BT-7 even starred in the pop movie where it was remembered for its fiery exhaust from the pipe. Well-known Arnold Schwarzenegger collects tanks and wanted to replenish his collection with the BT-7, but alas, the tank of this model is the only one in the world, and it's historically priceless. German Dugout It's a long time since the end of the Second World War. The trenches were overgrown with grass and the dugouts collapsed. But sometimes diggers managed to find a place untouched by time and people. A few years ago, two friends were lucky to find a whole German dugout. The entrance was covered with us, so they had to cut locks with a chainsaw. Looking inside, they found that the dugout was completely flooded with water. For more than two hours, they pumped water out. And while the motor pump was working, two friends imagined what amazing finds were waiting for them down there. The dugout could be completely clogged with German weapons, or the Third Reich awards with Hitler's bust on a table, or it could just tend to be empty. People of nearby villages could have carried all the weapons immediately after the war. After the water was pumped out, one of the diggers went down. The dugout was perfectly preserved. There was a large table with a German helmet on it and nothing else. When they cleaned the find, the helmet turned to be in an excellent condition with native paint on. There were owner's initials inside, and that increased the artifact value. You can't make much money on it, but friends will keep memories of this adventure for life. Rocket Launcher On the 7th of November 1941, Four BM-13 Katusha multiple rocket launchers installed on the base of STZ-5 Caterpillar tractors went to the front. In the Tula offensive operation, the division provided fire support to Soviet troops during the liberation of Stalinogorsk. On the 12th of December, having covered the concentration of German troops at Maklet station with two volleys from the area of Ruseva village, the division began to redeploy to the southern shore of Shat River. However, having fallen under the heavy shell and the convoy returned to Prutki and forced the Shat River across the ice. A car, a tractor and several combat vehicles passed, but one of the Katushas sank, falling through the ice with the driver. In 1988, a veteran who witnessed the accident pointed to the place where Katusha sank. On October 22nd, an attempt to leave the car was made by the bracket connecting to cables burst. Only on November 25th, they managed to pull the rocket launcher to the shore. It took five tractors. A year later, the car was completely restored and took part in the victory parade. Air bomb. And here is another dangerous find accidentally found in Minsk during earthworks. The police officers who arrived at the scene decided to take the dangerous item to the military place and destroy it. 
the bomb was laid to the deep pit to reduce the spread of fragments. Then the shell was mined and detonated. Steamboat Armenia After several years of searching, the Soviet ship Armenia, sunk by the Germans during the Second World War, was found near Crimea. The loss of the ship is considered one of the largest sea tragedies in history. There were up to 10,000 refugees and wounded on board. A delay in the port of Yalta is called the fateful mistake of Captain Plowshevsky by many researchers. The ship was supposed to go to sea at night, but the loading took much time and Armenia departed only in the morning. According to one of the versions, the crew of Armenia was waiting for a valuable cargo, including gold and jewelry. But cars hurrying to the coast got stuck on a road broken by bombs and shells. On November 7, 1941, at 10.40 a.m., after two aircraft bombs hit, the ship sank in four minutes. It was the last transport from the abandoned city. There were people from 11 hospitals, the Soviet and party activists of Big Yalta, doctors and many partisan families. Only eight people were able to escape. The search operation took place in March 2020 and the area was examined by sauna. This study showed that there was an object resembling Armenia at one and a half kilometers depth. A robot examined the bow of the ship, trying to find the name, but no luck. Probably it was painted with paint quickly corroded by aggressive sea water. Although there are more than enough signs to confirm that this is Armenia. Doubts disappeared after finding the noon bell on which the inscription Armenia is clearly read. In the winter of 1941, the KV-1 heavy tank slid off frozen logs, crossing the Don River, and sank. Later, when the barge moving along the river hit the tank gun and was damaged, it was decided to blow the tank up. An eyewitness said that after the explosion, the tank hatch flew high out of the water and fell into the water again several meters away. The explosion damaged the tank severely, but couldn't destroy it completely. Nowadays, there are only a few tanks of this model left. The KV series tank is a Soviet heavy tank from the Second World War. In total, from 1939 to 1942, 3,163 KV-1s of various modifications were produced. Three of them were equipped with a flamethrower instead of a machine gun. The tank had thick armor. The very first meeting with the KV shocked the Nazis. German tanks couldn't penetrate the armor, for example, a German 50mm tank gun projectile could penetrate the vertical side of the KV only from a distance of 300 meters, and the inclined front armor only from a distance of 40 meters. Anti-tank artillery was also ineffective, so armor-piercing projectile 50mm Puck 38 anti-tank gun was able to destroy the KV in favorable conditions at a distance of only less than 500 meters. The fire of 105 mm howitzers and 88 mm anti-aircraft gun was more effective. In 2013, it was decided to raise this combat vehicle from the water. Specialists scanned the bottom of the river to determine the exact location of the KV-1. Due to the difficult bottom topography and weather conditions, the operation was postponed until spring. And finally, from the 29th of May to the 7th of June 2014, with the forces of the National Rescue Agency, KV-1 was lifted from the bottom and transported to shore. Local people provided active assistance to the search group. For experienced agency specialists, this was the 55th the most difficult vehicle recovery. Heat, strong currents and zero underwater visibility brought the most trouble. In addition, the tank was sandwiched between the pillars of the old crossing. KV-1, covered with a meter-deep layer of silt, had been pulled for four days with a specially designed winch, first 60 meters underwater and then 20 meters on the ground. 
A huge number of local residents gathered to watch the legendary tank recovery. After the operation was complete, the tank was delivered to the military unit, where it's being restored. Then the KV-1 will be sent to Moscow to the museum in Kubinka. It will be the first vehicle of this type in the famous museum exposition. In 2016, a secret Nazi base was discovered in the Arctic. During the investigation in the bunkers, the items from the Second World War that belonged to the Nazis were found. The base was built by the Germans in 1942, in 1,000 kilometers from the North Pole. Alexandra Land is an island belonging to the French Joseph Land archipelago. It is located in the Barents Sea. Germany identified it with the code Schatzgrieber, or treasure hunter. It was originally used as a weather station and as a base to exchange data with submarines. The Germans settled here for a long time. The location for the base was chosen very well, on the shore of a deep bay which is adjoined by a vast strip of tundra, free of glacial, a lake with fresh water nearby. To protect the base from land, the Nazis set up minefields to the north and east of it, and from the side of the bay a machine gun pillbox was equipped, the ruins of which are still visible. The huge amount of shoes and other equipment brought to the island is surprising. Looks like that they intended to expand this military base significantly. Some of the German supplies are still lying around. In addition, in 1960s to 1970s, when a Soviet frontier post appeared on Alexandraland in about 15 kilometers from the base, a lot of German ammunition was taken from the base. For a long time, the border guards wore German boots, which they inherited from the war years. Besides the pillbox, there are still the remains of a house and a dugout. Examining the territory of the German base, our scientists found several of the same bomb-like containers for aviation parcels. Scraps of old camouflage nets also survived, and there are sheets of Hitler's speeches books inside the abandoned dugout. An interesting find was found closer to the bay. Here you can see a pipe going deep into the earth. Perhaps this is the part of the ventilation system of some kind of concealed structure. It can be a natural grotto, which the Germans managed to find and adapt for their purposes. It's also possible that the dimensions of this cavern are so large that the submarines could enter it. At least, the existence of similar huge caves connected with the sea by underwater corridors is known to exist on other Arctic islands, and in the German sources there is information that they found such caves big enough for submarines in the north. Several years ago, diggers from Russia discovered a German dugout, which has been completely preserved intact. The dugout, where German soldiers had been stationed during the World War II, was completely sealed with earth. It took two days to clean the room from clay and pump the water out. It turned out that the dugout was built from sleepers that the Germans had taken from an old railway. The cross ties were soaked in oil, which made them perfectly preserved in clay. A lot of military artifacts were raised from the old dugout. These photos show only a part of the weapons and ammunition that were found inside the dugout and adjacent trench. Evidently, the German units spent a lot of time here, but then they were dislodged by the Red Army. Also, there were a lot of German and Soviet bullet cases in the trench. All the dangerous objects were drowned in the river nearby. And this story is about a girl who inherited a grandfather's apartment after his death. Her grandfather used to be an officer and was in the police. While sorting out the things on an old closet, she found a heavy bag containing cartridges for various weapons and a Luger pistol. It was a Parabellum P08 German self-loading pistol, developed in 1898 by Austrian Georg Luger. The main advantage of the Parabellum is high firing accuracy achieved due to the comfortable anatomical handle with a high inclination and an easy trigger pull. It combined high power with sufficient compactness compared to other army pistols at the beginning of the 20th century. Parabellum was used in both world wars and is still popular with all gun lovers. The girl took all the weapons found to the police. The examinations showed that the pistol was in working order and greased. She was paid a finder's fee. 
In France, the First World War unexploded ordnance is still searched for. More than 100 years have passed since the war ended, but perhaps it will take as much time to find and disarm all the munition. Dozens of rusty World War I shells were raised from the Meuse River in France, west of Verdun. This place had been a significant battleground of the World War I, and thousands more unexploded shells and bombs still lie at the bottom. In just one day, the miners managed to get more than five tons of dangerous items out of the water. Experts say that there are cases when people try to touch or dismantle a dangerous find, and that leads to a tragic ending. Very often the bomb squads go to farmers' fields where old shells, grenades and bombs are found. Up to 50 tons of explosive can be found in the fields of France per year, and no one knows how much time it will take to remove all of them. Another World War II pistol was found by the police officers in a suspected of crimes apartment. The young man hadn't paid the utility bills for a long time, and when the workers came to disable the heating system, he took out an object looking like a gun and started threatening them. The police arrived at the scene and tried to detain the man, but he turned the gun on the officers. During the fight ensued, the man hit the policeman with a weapon in his head and face several times, but was neutralized eventually. The weapon turned out to be a 9mm German self-loading pistol Walther P38. The weapon was adopted by Germany on April 20, 1940. It gained much popularity and was used throughout the Second World War. The examination showed that the Walther was in working order and loaded. It's a miracle no one was hurt. Weapons arsenal in the river Police officers with cadets of the Nekrasov boarding school visited the Znaminsky district of the Arlov region, where 33 small arms from the Second World War were lifted by the divers on the Nugur river. The searches of the Nasledi team managed to find the weapons cache during their underwater historical searches on the Nugur and Ors rivers, carried out from July to September 2019 as a part of the Fire Resource project. The divers raised five anti-tank rifles, several rifles of the Marsin system, Diktarov machine guns and Spagin submachine guns. All weapons are in a very good condition. As the searches said, clean, grease, and you can go back to battle. A plane In central Poland, a Soviet military plane was found with the remains of two pilots. For many years, the wreckage rested at the bottom of the Vistula tributary. Now the river has become shallow due to the drought, and it's possible to extract fragments of the aircraft. Residents of a nearby village say they knew about the wreckage. As one of the locals say, they tried to investigate them several times, but unfortunately had no luck, since the remains were constantly hiding under at least two meters of water. Now I see that it's possible to extract them. The plane was shut down during the Second World War. When it crashed, it was shattered into pieces. Now archaeologists have managed to extract some of them, including the engine and the fragments of the fuselage with the cockpit. Mikhail Anchak, the historian's association member, says, We just dug up the cockpit. Unfortunately, it contains the remains of the pilots. We try to remove the remains properly and carefully. Historians believe that the plane was shut down in the last year of the war. At that time, German troops were retreating here towards Berlin. The aircraft could conduct reconnaissance. Zdislav Lishinsky, the director of the Vistula Museum in Visegrad, says, This is undoubtedly a Soviet plane. All inscriptions inside are in Cyrillic. What year was it? The cartridges inside are from 1943. At the same time, the pilots wore fur shoes and fur coats. We assume that the plane was shut down in January 1945. The rest of the aircraft fragments will be retrieved using heavy equipment. While the wings are still at a great depth, the model of the aircraft will be determined later with an examination. Experts hope to establish the identity of the pilots. About 600,000 Soviet soldiers died in battles with German troops on the territory of Poland. Armory 
More than 30 weapons and several thousand cartridges were seized by the police from a resident of Sevastopol. In the basement of the garage, a cache was made in which weapons and ammunition were stored. There was also a workshop in which weapons were altered and restored. The owner of the find was a collector. According to the man, he found most of the weapons on the battlefields of the Second World War. He altered some copies for firing blank ammunition in order to participate in the reconstruction of the Second World War battles. Among the items, there were several rare specimens that have historical significance. Also in the basement, there was an aircraft cannon from an Isle 2 aircraft in perfect working order. Now a resident of Sevastopol faces several years in prison for illegal firearms possession. The underwater recon team took a dive to a sunken submarine L2 Stalinitz. We have covered 2,200 kilometers in two days, Konstantin Bogdanov, ahead of the underwater expedition, said. The dive itself took three hours. This time was enough to take photos and videos of the sunken U-boat and explore the damage. The submarine was launched on the 21st of May 1931. In 1932, it was named Stalinitz. On the 15th of September 1934, it was designated as L2. The boat got the complete overhaul in Leningrad. On November 12, 1941, at 6 p.m., the U-boat left Kronstadt for a mine lane in Danzig Bay as a part of the convoy No. 4, heading for the Henka Peninsula. On the night of November 14, the boat got blown up on three naval mines D-46, laid by the German mine layer Kaiser. The entire crew died, except for the motor mechanic Vasily Sherbina, electrician Boykov, and senior radio operator Nikolai Klaskov, who had boarded the sinking ship Surovy and were rescued from it. A Black Digger's Stash Millions of World War II military artifacts are waiting in the ground to be found. Thousands of diggers go out looking for the trophies every day. Someone keeps his finds for his own collection, while the others make money restoring and selling their finds. In 2018, a Russian policeman detained a Sochi resident for illegal World War II arms trade. He also bought modern blank firing guns and converted them into the firearms. During a search of his house, a whole warehouse of various weapons and ammunition was discovered. There were hundreds of cartridges of various calibers, even four anti-tank rifles, grenades, gunpowder, as well as blueprints, spare parts and equipment for converting and repairing firearms. The Arsenal's owner is looking for a serious jail time. MG42. And here is an interesting find made by one of the diggers in the woods. As you may have already guessed, this is a German MG42 machine gun. It was released in Germany in 1942 and replaced the earlier MG34 gun. For its enormous rate of fire, it got several nicknames among the Soviet soldiers, including Bone Cutter and Hitler's Circular Saw. MG-42 couldn't replace its predecessor completely, and both of these models were used by German soldiers till the end of the war. Finding such a machine gun in good condition is every searcher's fantasy. You can simply brag to your friends when they come to your place, or you can remake it for firing blank cartridges and sell to World War II reenactors for a large sum. But this guy did it differently. He took it to the police. 
After the examination, the machine gun took its place in the local museum exposition. A case of grenades A few years ago, a digger was lucky to find a box full of grenades in excellent condition near St. Petersburg. The find was in grey clay and oxygen couldn't damage the case. Even the experienced diggers were surprised to see the contents when the box was opened. The grenades looked new, each wrapped in oil-soaked paper. Even the paper, indicating date and the packer's name, was preserved. This case was packed in 1938 in Kharkov by a woman named Gavrilova. The explosives were removed and the grenades dummies took their places in numerous collections. Weapons and drugs stash in St. Petersburg, a police officer discovered an arsenal of firearms and ammunition as well as World War II military awards. A 34-year local resident was detained and a plastic bag with cocaine was found during physical body search. The police decided to conduct a search at the suspected apartment. As a result of the search, a whole arsenal was seized, including three cartridges marked Luger 9mm, three cartridges 9x19, as well as 138 cartridges of various calibers, three revolvers, five pistols, a rocket launcher, five bolts, two submachine guns, a rifle, and two tablets with orders and medals of the Soviet Army, a total of 27 pieces. 88mm flag Russian workers discovered a German 88mm anti-aircraft gun while laying a gas pipe in Belgorod region. This gun was in service from 1932 to 1945, being one of the best anti-aircraft guns of the Second World War. It also served as a model for the Tiger tank guns and Ferdinand assault guns. These guns were widely used as anti-tank and even field guns, as they had good efficiency, rate of fire and accuracy. Flag 88 proved to be good in the fight against heavy Soviet KV tanks. This gun is often called the most famous weapon of the Second World War. While examining the area, police officers found an unexploded shell, the same as the one that destroyed the German gun. Apparently, the German anti-aircraft gun fired at the Soviet positions, since the area where it was found provides an excellent view of a large area. But it also made it an excellent target for the Soviet artillery. After the barrel was examined by the D-miners, it was extracted and sent for the restoration. We really hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please do hit the like button, leave the comment and let us know what you think. And subscribe to the channel not to miss new videos. Nevsky Pitachok is the name of a bridgehead on the left bank of Neva River, opposite Nevskaya Dubrovka. The Russian word Pitachok means a five copic coin or a very small area. It was held by Soviet troops of the Leningrad Front during the Battle for Leningrad from September 19, 1941 to April 29, 1942, and from September 26, 1942 to February 17, 1943. From this bridgehead, Soviet troops repeatedly tried to launch an offensive on Mga and Sinevina to meet the troops that were striking from the east and thereby break through the blockade of Leningrad. Despite the fact that all attempts to expand the bridgehead and develop the offensive ended unsuccessfully, Nevsky Pitachok became one of the symbols of courage and self-sacrifice of Soviet soldiers. During the battles of September 1942, four T-38 tanks sank in the Nevsky Pitachok area, which is quite a unique fact, since just 1,200 of them were produced and most of them were destroyed in the first months of the war. One of them was salvaged out of the river in 2005. The tank took part in the battles of the Leningrad Front since 1941. In 1942, it joined the first company of a separate light tank battalion. At the end of September 1942, battalion was supposed to cross over to the Nevsky Pitachok to support other troops. The first company of 10 floating tanks aplot performed from the starting positions on the 26th of September 1942 at 3.30 am and descended towards the shore at 4.30. 
When descending into the water, one tank stopped for technical malfunctions and two vehicles had their tracks come off. All three of them were withdrawn to their original positions the same night. The remaining seven tanks in the expanded line battle order descended into the water and moved to the left bank. 70 meters from the shore, one tank ran into an underwater object and sank. The enemy launched artillery and mortar fire from the shore and from the flank. Three tanks were hit and sank, and only three vehicles got to the left bank and continued their accurate fire. Since the first echelon infantry crossing was delayed and the tanks were hit, the crews tried to swim back and were shot in the water. Only a few of them were able to make it back to the right bank. In February 2005, one of the tanks was pulled ashore. A machine gun was banned from being hit by a German shell, the turret was torn from the mountains, and water gushed through the hatches. The crew most likely managed to leave the combat vehicle, but its further fate is unknown. The T-38 was completely restored to running condition and now takes part in the reconstructions of the Second World War battles and exhibitions. The first serial German tank Tiger, numbered 001, was found near St. Petersburg. On September 22, 1942, the first attack by Tiger tanks took place near Leningrad. A German platoon with four Tigers took part in the offensive against the Red Army. The terrain was swampy and wasn't suitable for a heavy tanks attack. Having successfully covered a few hundred meters, the tanks came under heavy artillery fire. A shell hit one of the Tigers, stalling the engine. Another tank got stuck in the mud. The remaining Tigers retreated after being damaged. Attempts to pull the stuck tank out of the swamp were unsuccessful. German bomb squad blew the first serial Tiger tank up with a large amount of explosives. In 2014, Russian diggers were able to locate the site of the tank explosion. The explosion was very powerful. Parts of the Tiger were scattered over 400 meters. The color was determined from the remains of the armor. The first Panzerkampfwagen 6 was painted yellow. The restoration of the tank isn't planned, since the large fragments couldn't be found. Most likely they were collected after the war to be melted down. All the parts found were added to the exposition of the Defense of Leningrad Museum. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to the channel not to miss new videos. There was an old urban legend about a World War II tank buried under the foundation of a house. To everyone's surprise, it wasn't just a legend. Battles for Voronezh in 1942 were even larger than the battles for Stalingrad, but they were almost forgotten by historians. Soviet people were fighting for every single yard of Voronezh, just like in Stalingrad. 
German troops managed to capture only the right side of the city, separated by the river. In January 1943, the Soviet army went on the offensive, completely freeing the city from the Nazis. A lot of the broken military equipment remained on the streets. Therefore, the legend of the tank could easily have been real. In 2011, the old two-story house under which the tank was supposed to be was demolished, but nothing was found. In September 2016, the Dawn Search team carried out large-scale excavation at the site of the former house. Parts of several wrecked T-34 tanks and other military artifacts were found. It turned out that after the war there was a scrap metal collection point at this place. And not only tanks but also broken guns and even aircraft were collected here. After that the collection point was closed, and the metal that they couldn't take out was simply buried. The found parts will go to the restoration of other T-34 tanks. In the summer of 2020, a 76mm regimental gun of the 1927 model was raised solemnly in the Kirovsky district of the Leningrad region. It was a place of great battles between the Nazis and the Red Army. This is a Soviet light regimental gun of 76.2mm caliber for infantry and cavalry direct support. It is the first large-scale model of artillery equipment created in the USSR. The gun was in serial production from 1928 to 1943 and took an active part in many pre-war armed conflicts as well as in World War II itself. In total, about 18,000 guns of this type were produced. Regimental guns were a part of the infantry combat formations and quickly suppressed enemy firing points. This gun sank during the crossing, having come under German artillery fire in October 1941. The place has long been known to the searchers, but it took a lot of time and expensive equipment to find and then raise the gun ashore. Now it will be restored and replenish the collection of the Battle for Leningrad Museum. Yak-1 Airplane in the summer of 2020, Russian diggers recovered a Soviet plane from the ground, presumably a Yak-1 fighter. The remains of the pilot were also found. Most likely, the pilot died on August 25, 1942. On this day, nine of Soviet bombers and six Yak-1 fighters took off from the airfield in Livni. Their target was the airfield and station of Kastorne, an important railway junction that allowed the German to supply their troops at Stalingrad. Having destroyed about 30 German aircraft, they headed back to Livni. At that moment, they were attacked by a large group of German fighters. Eight bombers and two Yak-1 were shot down. The searchers managed to track the fate of several crew members. Four pilots were captured, one was buried by local residents. The fate of the rest is unknown. The wreckage of the found Yak-1 laid at a depth of 4 meters. The diggers managed to find several fragments of the pilot's bones, part of a flight helmet and a glove. They plan to find the remaining aircraft and establish the names of the pilots. Gas AA Truck in 2015, the legendary gas AA lorry was discovered by Karelian searches in the forest. More precisely, everything that remained of it after the battles of Winter War in 1941. Parts of the truck showed multiple bullet holes. Probably a column of Soviet troops was ambushed and defeated. The Finns took all the working vehicles as a trophy, and this gas remained in the forest for 75 years. 
With great difficulty, the searchers managed to pull the core parts out of the forest for restoration. Many of them are rare because the lorry's cabin was made of wood, and the fenders and headlights were made of very thin metal that quickly decays in the open air. For example, over the past few years, several cars have been lifted out of the water near St. Petersburg, but only the frame with wheels and the engine with gearbox remained intact. The body and the cab were almost completely destroyed by water. In October of this year, another such truck was raised from the bottom of Ladaga. The body was partially preserved, but the cabin was broken. The car didn't reach Leningrad and stopped forever only 8 kilometers away, where it was attacked by enemy aircraft. Divers found pieces of burlap at the bottom. Presumably, the car was carrying bread or flour to the besieged city. Let's hope that the lorry can be restored to running condition. Fog Wolf FW-190 The Kurgan search party discovered the wreckage of the German Fog Wolf 190 fighter in the Panirovsky district. The remains of the pilot and his personal belongings were also found. During World War II in the summer of 1943, a German plane was shut down and fell into a kitchen garden just 50 meters from a residential building. The search party worked three days at the crash site. The clay soil has well preserved the aircraft parts. The engine was 8 meters deep. We also managed to find a plate with the engine number. Now the pilot's name need to be established to inform his relatives in Germany. The pilot is most likely reported missing. Many of you have read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. But only few of you know that the submarine Jules Verne wrote about actually existed. True, the writer had changed the story significantly, but the fact of the U-boat existence was confirmed in the 21st century. In 2001, the wreckage of the very first submarine was discovered in Panama, and today it lies on a deserted beach in a protected area. Rust and sea waves have left deep marks over the hull. In this video, we will tell you the story of this amazing artifact. In May 30th, 1966, New York witnessed a sensation. The steel monster plunged into the waters of the East River. The submarine Submarine Explorer went on its maiden voyage underwater. The people on the shore were holding their breath in excitement. Could the steel boat float on its own? Until that time, no one had succeeded. An hour later, the submarine explorer, with its invent on board, began to rise from the bottom. And it surfaced on its own. The first test was successful. The boat that was built by the German engineer Julius Kroll was 11 meters long and up to two and a half wide. Through special hatches at the bottom, the crew could collect clams and oysters from the seabed. The boat moved with the help of a hand and foot drive. In the waters of the East River, Kroll proved his idea worked. Then, submarine explorer disassembled into its component parts set off on a long journey from New York to Panama. Numerous pearl shells could be collected there. In Panama, the appearance of a submarine was a real sensation. People were expecting this mysterious boat with curiosity. Full of energy and impatience, Kroll and his team started their first dives into the depths of the Pacific Ocean. However, it was then that a disaster struck. Kroll and his people suddenly began to die. It was suggested that the deaths were caused by the consequences of malaria. However, we think that there was another cause of the genius inventor's death, an insidious and completely unknown at that time decompression sickness. The submarine submarine explorer and its crew dived and ascended apparently too quickly. Nitrogen bubbles released in blood led to severe injuries in the human body. The same fate befell the reserve crew, so that soon no one wanted to serve on board the boat. Submarine explorer was left alone on the abandoned beach of San Templa Island. The world quickly forgot their revolutionary submarine and its inventor. Jules Verne was inspired by Kroll and his invention to create his masterpiece 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. 
And in 2001, the whole world, again, had the story of the first submarine when it was discovered on the island. But that was the end of it. The boat is still where it was found, and the salty ocean water mercilessly corrodes its hull. Well, that's all for today. Subscribe to our channel not to miss new exciting videos.